by the National Hockey League Wars. That's Rick Bonus. Gary Long played in the NHL. They'll play pro hockey, I guess, all told, with the WHA and the NHL for about 12 seasons, Eddie. Good hockey player, too, Jiggs. And it, wasn't it last year they talked about Barry Long and the amount of money that he was being paid to coach the Winnipeg Jets? Yeah, even you were making more money than he was. <laughs> I could only say that once. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Barry Long, the Winnipeg coach. In the last couple of years since they joined the National Hockey League. And now it's time for the... What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And now the officials for tonight's game. It goes to the hands of Ron Fournier, who will be the referee. Ron Forsey and Swede Knox are the two linesmen assigned by the National Hockey League for this first meeting between the Islanders and the Jets. Billy Smith in goal tonight for the Islanders, a record on the season of six wins, two losses, no ties, a 3.61 goals against average. Lifetime is a record of four, one, and two against Winnipeg. And there's Brian Hayward. Hayward is 24 years of age, a 5-4-2 record with a 3.41 goals against average. Has never lost to the Islanders. One win, one tie in his career, and a 2.00 lifetime goals against average against the Islanders. We're told that Denny Popan has a muscle pull. Is that the signal you were giving me, uh, Eddie? General Manager and President Bill Torrey just stuck his head in our broadcast booth and told me that he'd pulled a muscle in the lower part of his stomach. Not serious, just they figured that with the advantage of seven defensemen that they would sit him out. So Langevin handling the puck is back in the lineup tonight, playing with Gerald Dedick, who has it now. Dedick to Gilbert, off his stick, and to Randy Carlisle. Laps it down into the Islander end. That's Langevin back for it. Troche is up front between Bossy and Gilbert for the Islanders. Langevin to Bossy, related neatly to Gilbert, who comes over center ice. Into the Winnipeg zone, a pass to Troche. Tried to set up Gilbert, but it's cleared by Hayward. Lundholm has it for the Jets. Is checked by Troche. Carlisle takes over back in the net. He and Robert Picard together on the Winnipeg defense. It comes up left wing for Spale. Spale back to Carlisle. Center ice, he likes to flip it into the Islanders zone, and Langevin chases it. LaFontaine has come out to center ice. Wayne Sutter is on right wing. Gilbert's still on the left side. 
And LaFontaine was checked by McLean. Now gives it to Langevin over to Ditta. Carroll uses the right wing boards. The puck goes to Kite waiting at the Winnipeg defense. Bersan has come out for the Islanders. A minute and ten seconds gone in the opening period. He watches Langevin is checked in his own zone, but Pearson took Howard Chuck's weak shot away and has played it around to Clark Gillies. Gillies dumps it out to center ice. Kite is there. Jim Kite banks it off the boards. Pearson out of Langevin to Dwayne Sutter. Kite takes over at center ice. Pearson has to go back. Pearson trying to play it up the middle, and it'll go right to Brian Hayward. Leaves it back of the net. For Sutter came in to forecheck. Kite. Tries left wing. This is Mullen out to center ice. The pass off Arneal's stick and recovered by Pearson to Dwayne Sutter. Now LaFontaine shoots it into the Winnipeg end of the ice. Hayward leaves it for Babbage. Babbage, who handles the puck well, gets into center ice, then lost it. Helene ties up the man, and Lane has just fed it to Goring. Now back to Boudelier. Ball Boudelier, left side to Lane at center ice. Plays it over the line, but Bourne was ahead of the puck and thus an offside. A break in the action. The Islanders and the Winnipeg Jets start scoring. Do you know which of these oils gives you the best engine protection under the toughest driving conditions? Sub-zero cold or blazing heat? This one. Mobile One. Now, buy five quarts of Mobile One in this easy pour plastic container, and Mobile will send you a $5 rebate on the motor oil that gives your engine extra protection. Now, for less money. Face off in the center right zone. Boschman on the draw for Winnipeg with Turnbull on the left side and Arneal on the right. The Islanders using Butch Goring between Matt Saline and Bob Bourne. Little ear back for the puck. It's given it to Helene. Matz carries it to center ice across the Winnipeg line, taken out at the defense. Goring nudges it into the corner, chases it with Ellett. Goring gets roughed up in the boards, and here's Boschman starting out on the right side. Gave it to Arneal. Arneal's pass to Turnbull was blocked. Goring takes over. Butch Goring, who grew up in St. Boniface, neighboring suburb of Winnipeg, got it outside the line, brought back in on a close call offside at the Islander blue line. Always a close call, Jiggs. The Islanders all moving toward the center ice area, and the puck taken by number 27, Turnbull, and as he headed back into the Islanders' end, he was just a short width of the puck, I would guess. He was arguing a little bit with Swede Knox, the linesman, about the fact he didn't feel he was offside. Jets win the dry here as Howard Chuck got it back to Kite, and he's played it in off the right wing boards. Longevin with it back of the Islander goal. Fanned on his effort to play it to the corner. Howard Chuck centers out of the reach of Diddick, and picking it up on right wing is Flatley. Pat Flatley out with John Tonelli and Brent Sutter. Hayward cuts the puck off back of the net, lays it up the wing. Mullen was bumped by Diddick, who pinched in, and out comes Brent Sutter. Sutter to Tonelli, took the pass in his skates and kicked it back to Longevin. To Diddick. Once more for Langevin. Now to Brent Sutter. To Flatley over on the left side. He falls at the Winnipeg line and Babbage takes over. David Babbage plays it off Howard Chuck stick right to Langevin. Now to Tonelli. Tonelli to Brent Sutter. Steps over the line. Kite chases him into the boards and the puck ends up back in the net. Babbage is checked there by Flatley. That Flatley unable to center. Brent Sutter steps in front of McLean. Flatley puts it out in front but Howard Chuck was coming back. Howard Chuck. It's away from Brent Sutter's check. Dumps it into the center right zone. Mullen had to reach behind. Picks it up. Comes over the line. And was checked. McLean goes after it. Johnson takes him into the corner boards. McLean trying to play the puck. Gave it to Howard Chuck. And the relay was broken up by Johnson. This is Greg Gilbert for the Islanders. He is checked by Dale Howard Chuck. And the Islanders have to go back. Captain Pearson takes a look. Gives it to Johnson. Thomas Johnson's long pass onto Trotche's stick. Trying to commit around Carlisle. He does. Trotche centers. Bossy was knocked down. Johnson at the point. Gives it to Pearson. He shoots Hayward. The stick hand save. Johnson with the rebound. Fired it back of the net, but it came off the boards right to Carlisle. Ahead to Steen. Steen spots Mail on right wing, but he couldn't pick up the pass. Mail centers now. Lundholm goes for the corner. Trying to put it out in front. Johnson takes care of him there. The Jets control the puck two on one. A good stop by Smith, and he's great save on the rebound as they just robbed Snail. 
Good opportunity for the Winnipeg Jets. Mail got to be a little upset with himself. He didn't get a good shot away. Good play in the corner. Winnipeg recover the puck. There's a shot on net. There's Smale all alone and his shot as it went for the lower left hand corner. Billy Smith took it away from him right here. Winnipeg with a couple of attempts. Billy Smith making two good saves keeping the Islanders from falling behind. The Islanders losing possession of the puck in their own end of the ice. Well, looking at Pat Flatley on his earlier shift here tonight brings back memories of February 29th. Uh, this year, Ellis shot was just blocked by Smith. Latley's first shift of the game, first shot on goal in the National Hockey League. One to nothing Islanders. It was their only win over Winnipeg last season. Now LaFontaine went in after the puck was checked. Gillies gets a piece of his man in the corner, but Ellis maintained control of it, gave it to Boschman. He's checked right at the blue line. That's LaFontaine turning, steps over the blue line, played it just out of the reach of Gillies, who had pulled up. Fontaine knocks it away from Waters, feeds the blue line. There's Gord Lane with a shot. Right on, Hayward stuck the left pad in front of it. Starting out is Laurie Boschman. Boschman into the Islander zone, runs head first into Boudelier. They both tumble to the ice, and Gord Lane moves it up left way. Wayne Sutter pokes it out into center ice. That's Waters for Winnipeg. Helene stepped in front of Arneal. The Boschman came back to give it to Waters. Now to Wellett. Ellett out to Arneal at center ice to Howard Chuck on the right side. Appeared to be offside, but no whistle. And here's Helene starting back. That's Helene over the Winnipeg line. Offside is the call as Gorn has been pushed in over the blue line. A break in the action. There is no score with 14-10 remaining in the opening period. You're about to see an unusual race. Three European performance sedans against the all-new Toyota Cressida. Go get him, James. The Cressida is a luxury car with limousine-style comfort and features. And the new Cressida's independent suspension and electronically fuel-injected twin cam six fits right in with its European counterparts. The Toyota Cressida hits up with the best of them in every way but one. Price. Did we win, James? By about fifteen thousand dollars, sir. Oh, 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 Good shot a moment ago by Gord Lane, Jiggs. Good stop by the Winnipeg goaltender. Hayward got his left foot on it. He didn't see it until it was almost by him. Winnipeg going with a couple of young goaltenders, Hayward and Mark Barron. Hayward is 24, Barron is 23. Babbage in the meantime fires one from the blue line. Smith jumped off his skates, took it up on the left shoulder, and is shaken up. Slow getting back into position in the Islander goal, and here's Wilson with it. Ron Wilson over the line with McBain. Wilson to McBain in the corner. Picked up by Lukowicz. Centers it out in front. Nobody there for the Jets. And out come the Islanders. But now some sticks up in the air. Diddick and Wilson with the sticks up. And referee Ron Fournier calling one penalty at least. Diddick is going off. Billy Smith still feeling the shot, a high shot that hit Smith. There's the play in front of the net. Oh, Diddick. Takes Wilson out of the play. Wilson kind of fought back. There's the part that we don't like to see. Those sticks get up, but both of them had sense enough to drop the sticks down. Did not use them. Temptation is always there. There's Gore Diddick in the penalty box. There's the shot a moment ago by Babbage. Look at Billy Smith as he jumped in the air. He took it off his left shoulder up near his neck. Stung him for a minute. Still showing the effects. The Winnipeg power play has been good on 20 of 88 chances. That works out to about 22.7% efficiency. Seventh in the National Hockey League, Jake. Not a bad power play for Winnipeg. Well, we'll see what they do here. The Islanders have not given up a power play goal against in their last four games. Killed off 15 in a row. They're 10th in penalty killing at 80.4% efficiency. Trache and Gilbert up front on defense. It is Langevin and Pearson as McLean got it to the blue line. Held in by Babbage to the corner and centered in front, but Langevin blocked Mullen's pass. Mullen picks it up again. Feeds the blue line to Babbage. Over to Carlisle. Carlisle a drive. Smith kicks it out, and there's Trache for the rebound. Fed it just out of the reach of Gilbert. And the Jets have to come back. What a stop by Billy Smith, Jake. A beautiful left foot save. Heavy traffic in front of him, but he got to it. Now we watch as Carlisle starts out. 45 seconds gone in the Winnipeg power play. There's no score in the first period. Carlisle slaps it in from center ice. Howarchuk goes in after it. Dale Howarchuk plays it back of the net. Mullen looks for somebody in front. Gave it to Howarchuk. Sneaks along the boards. 
Plays it into Mullen. His backhander kicked out by Smith. It's in the goal crease, and he's got his pads on top of it as McLean was standing right there trying to knock it away from him. Winnipeg handling the puck well. When I look at Randy Carlisle on the point, Jiggs, there he is standing up at the top of the blue line. There's the play in front. McLean moving in from the side. Smith got a piece of it. Look at him clamp his legs on it. Now he's going to try and hold himself from sliding across the blue line with his left hand as the whistle blows. But talking about Randy Carlisle, he uh, responsible in Pittsburgh. Didn't they set a record that the Islanders originally held for better than 100 power play goals in a season? And it was his booming shot off the point that scored several and set up several more. That was the same year that he was not only the Norris Trophy winner, but also a first All-Star, 1981. They're very high on the way he reported to camp here in Winnipeg this year. It slimmed down and came with a great attitude, they say. Turnbull handling the puck in the Islander end of the ice. Boudelier picks it up, is knocked down by Turnbull, and falls on top of the puck. Boudelier looks around to see if Fournier's going to call a penalty. None will be called. Now 28 seconds remaining in Gerald Dedick's call. A couple of good opportunities for the Winnipeg Jets on the power play. Only two. Billy Smith making one good save. Uh, one hard shot. Good coverage by the penalty killing team for the other. Winnipeg out shooting the Islanders six to two at this point as you look at Kelly Rudy, the backup goaltender. Hard when you think about it, he had Six goals go by him the other night, and he played outstanding. I'm just wondering what it would have been like if he hadn't, or five, excuse me. Yeah, he was brilliant. So was Rajon Lemelin in the Calgary goal. The Islanders have just cleared the puck down the ice. Going back for it is Babbage. Brent Sutter into forecheck. Babbage tries the right side for a Howard Chuck. Across to McLean on left wing. Gave it to Mullen, who slaps it wide. Smith leaves it back in the net for Gord Lane. Up the middle it goes. Ellett got a stick on it. Recovers out at center ice. Gave it to Babbage, and the penalty to Diddick has expired. There's no score in the opening period. Ellett fires it in wide of Bill Smith. He reached out with a catching glove, grabbed it, and fell to the ice. Forces a face on. Break in the action with 11 and a half minutes remaining in period one. The Islanders nothing, the Winnipeg Jets nothing. What does it take to excel? I know the deadline. You'll get it tomorrow. It takes speed, reliability, economy. It takes express mail next day service from the post office. Our two-pound pack is just $9.35 overnight. And we deliver over 100,000 packages on time every day. Yes, we got them. Oh, and Jerry, thanks. Express mail service. We deliver excellence for less. a moment ago shooting the puck in jigs wearing number two originally from cleveland ohio his father bob ellett was a teammate of john ferguson's when ferguson played for the cleveland barons isn't that something yeah big bob ellett this is ellett playing it around the boards tonelli over in the far wing drops it back to thomas johnson Tonelli and Boschman had the sticks up a little. It's Pearson feeds it to Brent Sutter. He's over the line with a pass to Tonelli. He shoots Hayward out to make the save. The rebound is blocked. Flatley shoots. He scores. Pat Flatley comes back to Winnipeg and puts the Islanders on top in the first period. Big goal for the Islanders. Big goal for Pat Flatley as they take a one to nothing lead. There's the original shot by John Tonelli. There's the rebound as it laid out in front. Winnipeg had a chance to clear it, but Flatley got to it before they could and bounced it off the goaltender into the net. There's the hard shot by John Tonelli. He got in behind his coverage, and with the goaltender falling around, Hayward losing his balance, trying to get back into position after making the original stop off a tremendous blast by Tonelli. Snuck in underneath him. Flatley makes it one to nothing. Flatley, who had been on a hot streak, hadn't scored in the last four games. Got the Islanders up, and now a shot from Lundholm is blocked by Smith. Picard from the right blue line, and his shot was blocked. Rache carries it over the line with a pass to Bossy. He is checked by Carlisle, and it comes to Spale on the left side. Long pass to Lundholm, steps over the line, dropped it to Steen, back to Lundholm, in too deep. Goes back to the net with it, comes out in front and played it over top of Picard's stick. Up the right wing comes Bossy. Has Trache with him, two on two. Bossy can't get through the defense. 
And Lundholm fed it to Picard, who was coming back. Picard tries the right wing. Steen relayed it, but not out of there. Gord Lane trying to set up Bossy, but Steen comes back. Steen to Lundholm, down to Spail. Spail gets to the Islander line. He likes to play it in around the boards, and Smith will cut it off for Gord Lane. Lane to LaFontaine, to Gillies, and right back to Pat LaFontaine. He's over center into the Winnipeg zone. LaFontaine shoots Hayward the save. Covers up on the rebound as Gillies came breaking in off the left side. Apollo and Starbuck discover a dis direct link with Earth when they intercept a primitive starship floating through space. An exciting two-part adventure comes your way Saturday and Sunday at 6 on Battlestar Galactica here on Channel 9. I would imagine that John Tonelli gets one assist, Brent Sutter the other. Just a guess, I didn't pick up the PA announcement. Did you, 18? It's a very good guess, Jiggs. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> Should it be called an educated, educated guess? Educated guess, exactly. <laughs> Just a lucky one, folks. Babbage with the puck at center ice. Beats Mullen on left wing, fires, fits the glove save. Mullen let it go immediately, trying to pick the glove corner. 19, Mullen. New York boy, Brian Mullen, 5'10", 180 pounds, 20, 22 years old. Well, he's not 22, but he acts and feels like it most of the time. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to ask him, Jake. Did you how he felt after his first coaching attempt, or whatever you'd call it? Yeah, we first talked, game. talked briefly about it. He was satisfied with the effort. He said all I could ask was an effort, and the guys gave me an effort. I think he was happy with the debut. Lots of nights. You can do everything right and still not win. That's right. You know, his first National Hockey League roommate is at the game tonight. Ted Irvin. Irvin with Los Angeles. An opening year with Brian Kilray, and we get an icing call here, or at least an offside call, I should say, and a break in the action as well with the Islanders leading the Jets one to nothing. To make greatness look simple, like the great Gretzky and Canon's new vision of photography, the inspiring T70 with the pure agility of touch button control and three distinct program modes. Now, Canon makes it simple to handle any shot. The inspiring Canon T70. It makes the great shot simple. Canon, the official camera of the New York Islanders. Face-off coming to the right of Islander goaltender Bill Smith. Ryan Kilray has Butch Goring out there with Bob Bourne and Matt Saline on defense. Thomas Johnson and Stephen Pearson. Ron Wilson on the face-off for Winnipeg. They crowd in a little bit. You see the puck not dropped right on the face-off dot. And now Thomas Johnson takes over. Headed down the west left wing. Helene unable to get in around Waters. And Ellett is back. Goring ties him up on the boards. Ellett kicks the puck loose. Goring chases it. So does Waters. And it's Waters getting there first. Out comes Wilson. He and Lukowicz get over the line together. Wilson plays it to the corner. Pearson is back to give it to Matt Saline. Ups it high and into the center ice zone. Ellett waits for his teammates to get back. Out of Waters. To Lukowicz. Relayed the pass to McBain. Andrew McBain coming in on left wing. Unable to center it neatly, and flatly feeds it to Goring. Goring to Helene. They're across the line. Helene plays it around behind the net, and Hayward will cut it off for Ellett. Eight and a half minutes remaining in the opening period as the Jets start out. At center ice, it's Wilson. Bounces one toward Smith. Didn't drop as Smith came out to cut it off. Flatley has it. Pat Flatley shoots it off the board. Hayward lets it go to the corner. Tonelli and Picard collide. Brent Sutter unable to pick it up. And out comes Boschman. Boschman has Arneal. That's Arneal on right wing. Winds up, shoots, fits the pad save. Longevin feeds it ahead for Tonelli. Relays it to Sutter. Back to Tonelli. And across to Flatley. Flatley moving it on Carlisle. Makes the play at the blue line, but it was broken up. Here's Arneal. Arneal checked by Flatley, who steals it. Drops it back in over the blue line for Longevin. Boschman into forecheck. Longevin tries Diddick. Gerald Diddick behind the net. Longevin has to chase it. Fires at the length of the ice. And Hayward will cut it off back of the net for Carlisle. One to nothing on a goal by Pat Flatley. The Islanders leading the Winnipeg Jets as Lane steps into Arneal and the puck goes loose. It'll be picked up by Boudelier. 
Ball Boudelier into center. Pass to the left side to Gilbert. Steps over the Winnipeg line, working on Waters. They go to the corner together. Gilbert gives it to Bossy back in the net. In front, Trotje couldn't get a teed up in time, and here's Fail. Fail trying to pull away from Trotje. Comes to center over the Allender line. Lane got the puck off his stick, but Lundholm, who trailed, is bumped by Lane. Boudelier up with it. He is knocked down, and there will be a penalty against the Winnipeg Jets. Seven minutes, five seconds left in this opening period, and the Islanders get the power play chance. A hooking penalty. Take a look at it as the Islanders try to get out of their own end. Boudelier gets pulled down by Ludholm. A hooking penalty, and the Islanders get a power play opportunity. Winnipeg had one earlier when Didick took a high sticking penalty. Now the Islanders, the third best power play in the National Hockey League. Like to widen their one to nothing lead. 7.05 remaining here in the first period. Opening goal, Flatley, his seventh of the season from Sutter and Tonelli at 8.53. The Islander power play has been good on 21 of 81 chances. 25.9% in that area. The Winnipeg penalty killing, not as good as they had hoped, although it's a little better than the Islanders, actually. 82.7%. In the ratio as far as killing off penalties. That ranks them sixth in the National Hockey League, Jake. That's four better than the Islanders' penalty killing, which is tenth. The Islanders have been perfect over the last four games. Brought that penalty killing up. The power play has been good on eight of 25 chances in the last nine games. That's about a 32% efficiency record there, yet they scored only one power play goal in their last four games. One of seven chances in that span. And working right now in Winnipeg with a bad advantage. Trache between Gilbert and Bossy. Gilbert gets it back to Pearson. Over to Janssen. To Pearson. And it was into his skates and comes out to center right. Janssen and Pearson backing up together. Stefan Pearson to Thomas Janssen. He comes up from the right side. Janssen at the Winnipeg line. Plays it through to the right wing. Bossy chasing it with Boschman. It's Lori Boschman unable to clear it out, however. Janssen with it at the point. Into Bossy. Back it comes to Pearson. To Janssen. Let's the shot go. Gilbert tipped it in just wide. Carlisle chases it. Gilbert steps into him. Wilson for the Jets to Boschman, and they've cleared it out to center right. Right back in over the line comes Bossy. Checked by Carlisle. Trache gets his stick on it to Pearson. To Janssen. Comes in from the point, feeding Trache. Right to center, and it was deflected right to Carlisle, but he failed to clear it out. Pearson to Janssen. Johnson plays it off. Wilson skates, and it ends up in the center right zone. And a penalty coming as Johnson went back, trying to knock the puck away from Steen, and Thomas Johnson nullifies what was an Islander power play. Puck loose in center right. Here comes Steen in a leg race with Thomas Johnson to get it as Stefan Pearson intercepts the puck. Thomas Johnson takes down Steen and takes a penalty in the center ice area. Steen showing some good speed as he had a half a step outside of Thomas Johnson. Interference call is going to be on Thomas Johnson. And the reason for interference is because Steen had not touched the puck. He was in a race for it, and he was taken out of the play without making contact, so that's interference. Comes at 14.09 with 46 seconds left on the Islander power play. Dimmick shot it in, and it came off the boards rather crazily. Hayward had started out, and the puck... Ends up in the stick of Spale and gets over the line. Feeding it to Steen in front to Ellen. A backhander. Smith got a piece of that. Bill Smith juggling it back in the net. Drops it off for Diddick. Around the boards to Gillies. Now to Longevin. Longevin played it off some skates and it goes to Diddick. Diddick across to Gillies on the left side. Mark Gillies to Gerald Diddick and he has dumped it into the Winnipeg zone. Hayward lets it go. Ellen back to touch up. That'll be icing against the Islanders. Five seconds left. In the Winnipeg penalty, a minute and 19 seconds left in the Islander penalty. That's the icing call. Penalty to Thomas Johnson made me quickly think of how sometimes fans can call a penalty. The referee kind of watching in one direction, looked in the other, and the fans, of course, everybody in the building, mostly, understandably, Winnipeg Jet fans, let out quite a roar. Steen was in a race with Thomas Johnson, and as Johnson took him out, there's a little bit of a delay. The referee then raised his arm. Now from the faceoff, Lane and Howarchuk tying it up. The puck underneath Gord Lane, and there's no further play. Well, this was the spot to be last night. The Winnipeg Arena. 
Whaling Jennings. Yeah, Whaling. Well, let me tell you quickly that Islanders broadcasts on WOR TV Sports Monday, December the 3rd from Vancouver at 10.30 and Wednesday, December the 5th, they play Wayne Gretzky and the Edmonton Oilers. That comes at 9.30. Now here's Carlisle holding on to the puck. Winnipeg with a man advantage. McLean shot changed direction as Boudelier stood in front of it. It's picked up by Goring. Wraps it around the boards but right to Carlisle. McLean unable to make the play. Boudelier knocks it away from him. McLean picks it up again, and again he's checked by Boudelier, who gets it to Bourne, and it's backhanded down into the Winnipeg zone. David Babich back for it. He's the younger brother of Wayne Babich. Now with Pittsburgh. Howarchuk gets a break as Lane fell. Howarchuk over the line, couldn't make the play, now feeds it back to Carlisle. Across it goes, and from the right side, Babich with the drive. Off the stick and up into the seats. A deflected, a hard shot that was deflected directly in front of Billy Smith. I don't think Smith saw the puck, but it went high over the net, up over the glass, into the end seats. Here's the pass by Carlisle to Babich. There's Gord Lane going down. There's the shot. There it is, deflected. Look at the head of Billy Smith. All of a sudden, he looks around and says, where is it? Babich can shoot the puck. He had lots of time as he took a pass from Randy Carlisle and drifted it, deflected directly in front of Smith, high up into the seat. Four minutes, 22 seconds left in the opening period. More importantly, there is just over a half a minute remaining in the Islander penalty to Thomas Johnson. Pearson has slapped it down the ice. Hayward out to play the puck, leaves it for Babbage. Danelli in the forecheck along with Brent Sutter. Babbage tries the right wing. The pass out of the reach of Howard Chuck. It's going the length of the ice. Smith lets it go as Longevin comes back, and that's called for icing. That should never happen on a power play. Don't like to see it happen, Jiggs. Of course, that just gives the opportunity that the Winnipeg Jets were enjoying of controlling the puck away. Not only that, but it brings the faceoff down into their own end of the ice with only 10 seconds remaining. They'd like to keep the puck moving, get an opportunity at Billy Smith. They haven't had that many on the power play. They've had two power play opportunities, or one plus, if you will. Plus something for the fans to cheer about. They haven't had a heck of a lot, although Billy Smith, maybe three necessary saves, good saves that he's had to make so far in this period. The Islanders leading one to nothing on a goal by Pat Flatley. As the Jets move it rink wide to Turnbull, he comes over the line on left wing. Turnbull can't get around Diddick and Longevin played it right to Smith. It comes back to Kite at the left side. Let's it go. Smith down has made the first save. A bouncing puck that ends up behind the net and underneath John Tonelli. Johnson has just come out of the penalty box with the teams back at six aside. A break in the action. The Islanders lead the Jets one to nothing. This buds to everyone who tackles the changes and challenges of that new promotion. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. Yeah, 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 yeah. This one's for you. 341 remaining. There's the play in front of Billy Smith. Another good opportunity for the Winnipeg Jets. Scott Arneal, number 11, couldn't get a handle on the puck as it slid by the net. Now Lundholm from back of the goal. Had Smale open, but didn't center it when he did. Smith cleared it aside. Longevin plays it to the right wing, and that's Bossy giving it to Brian Trottier. Trottier comes to center. Longevin moving up, clears it to Bourne. To Bossy, off his skates right at the blue line, and Picard moves it quickly to Steen. Back to Lundholm. Lundholm a slap shot. Smith, the skate save. The puck comes loose. Longevin falling is able to feed it to Bossy. To Gilbert, back to Bossy. Bossy slap shot right on. Hayward the save, and he'll smother the puck. Tremendous range of Mike Bossy. Hayward, well out of the net, cutting down as much of the angle as possible, taking the shot off Bossy's stick down at the other end of the ice. Good opportunity for the Winnipeg Jets. Ludholm's shot. There's the stop by Billy Smith, the loose puck in front. They all converge. The Islanders covering well. That's Dave Longevin as he cuts across in front, falling down and cleared the puck. Now Carlisle dumps it back in the net following the faceoff. Picard unable to get it out. Gilbert. Trying to play it for the Islanders, had trouble with it. And now Pearson takes over at center ice. Shoots it around the boards. There's Gilbert on the left side. 
But off his stick and Picard. Destine to Spale as he comes over center ice. Spale's drop pass to Steen. Had to go for it, and he likes to play it around the boards. Pearson steps in front of Spale. A loose puck. McLean in for Winnipeg. Picks it up. Gives it to Carlisle. Long shot. Fifth the save, and the puck goes to Gilbert on the rebound. Ahead to Bossy. Mike Bossy at center ice. Left it for Janssen who gets into the Winnipeg zone. Thomas Janssen with a shot. Oh, off the right shoulder of Hayward, and the rebound is cleared aside by the Winnipeg goaltender. Carlisle slaps one off the glass that's going to go the length of the ice. Ford Lane back to touch up and icing against Winnipeg. We're down to 2.15 left in the opening period. There's a break in the action. The Islanders leading the Winnipeg Jets one to nothing. Germany, Britain, Japan, Sweden, France, Italy. You have questioned America's ability to create a high-performance luxury automobile. Here's America's answer. The 1985 98 Oldsmobile. 98? Front-wheel drive. Multi-port fuel-injected engine. Four-wheel independent suspension. The 1985 98. Now, that's America's answer. By Thomas Johnson moving in. He had Bossy heading for the net. He had Trotje heading for the net. He pulled the puck back and then let it fly. A high, hard shot off the shoulder of Hayward. That's a close-up look of Dale Howarchuk. The Jets out shooting the Islanders 14 to 7 here in the first period. But Pat Flatley's goal has the Islanders up one to nothing. Ryan Mullen dumps it into center. Boudelier comes back. Boudelier and Lane together on defense. Up front, Gillies, LaFontaine, and Sutter. And here's Howarchuk into the Islanders' zone. Coming right in. He centered it just out of the reach of McLean. What a defensive move by Gordy Lane. He pushed McLean away from the side of the net on the play. And now we watch as Wayne Sutter comes in off right wing. Centered one that hit Ellett. Bounces into the corner. Gillies goes after it. Mark Gillies to Baudelier. A long shot. Sails wide. LaFontaine goes after the rebound. Gave it to Lane. Tried to set up Gillies in front, but the Winnipeg defense tightens up. And McLean gives the puck to Howard Chuck. He's over the Islander blue line. Is checked by Lane. This is Wayne Sutter coming down right wing. A pass. Off Tonelli's stick, picked it up, worked it off the glass. Fontaine into four check, but the Jets get control of it. Mullen has cleared it out to center. Going back is Longevin. This Brent Sutter, the Islanders had a lot of bodies out there as they're in the middle of the player change. Went undetected, and the Islanders have dumped it in. Or the Jets, I should say, have dumped it in, and here's Tonelli giving it to Brent Sutter. Comes to center, shoots it wide of Hayward, flatly and after it, forcing Hayward to move it to the corner. Picked up by Turnbull. Across to Arneal. Less than a minute to play in the period. Arneal is into the Islander end. Pass hit Longevin and bounces right to Bill Smith, who grabs it and holds on. What seems to be a routine investigation turns into a fight for survival for Pete and Mac when they have to battle both the police and the mob. Don't miss Switch. Sunday at 7 here on Channel 9. 46 seconds remaining in the opening period. Ryan Kilray sending out Pearson and Janssen on the Islander defense. Replacing Longevin and Diddick. Boschman will take the faceoff for Winnipeg. Brent Sutter for the Islanders. Arneal and Turnbull, the other Winnipeg forwards, and the Jets get the draw. Arneal back to Babbage, and he was checked. Brent Sutter picks it up at center ice. Unable to get it to Flatley, who was coming up quickly. This is Boschman. The pass across to Turnbull, and his shot was blocked by Pearson as he went down in front of the Islander goal. Gets up limping. In the meantime, Boschman has it again, but it's fed it outside the Islander blue line. Stephon Pearson jigs heading for the bench, limping. He took a, made a great defensive move, took the shot off his foot. Now, well, as we watch, it's Bossy handling the puck. A pass to Brent Sutter. Unable to set up Tonelli, who is coming in on the left side, and Spale moves up quickly into the Islander zone with a slap shot. Fifth, a good stick save, and the puck goes up into the seats with five seconds left in the period. Good hustle by Smale again. He knew he wanted to get the shot away. He was running out of time, and Billy Smith, as he has done several times throughout this first period, here's Smale right at the blue line. He let it go right through the feet of Boudelier. Look at Smith. His quick reflexes at the last second after the puck had cleared going by Paul Boudelier, he kicked it up into the stand. Four other games around the National Hockey League tonight will keep you posted with scores as they become final. 
course, with the lightness of the evening, you probably know the scores and we don't. Mm -hmm. It's 2-2, two, mm. two, two, as we're told here, Montreal and Buffalo. On the face-off, it comes back to the blue line. Ellett's shot was on target. Smith the save, and there's the horn, ending the first period. But right from the draw, Winnipeg with a good opportunity in the last couple of seconds of the period. The Islanders talking it over with Bill Smith, who has tested a total of 15, 16 times, make it. But after one period at the Winnipeg Arena, your scores. The New York Islanders won. The Winnipeg Jets nothing. We'll return with a recap following these messages. Somewhere there's a bank that gives me the financial services I need and some personal attention, too. Welcome to National Westminster Bank USA. I'll show you how to earn bonus yields on CDs. I'll help you lock in a low loan rate. I can help you expand, even start your business. And I promise that at NatWest USA, you'll always receive personal attention. So, from all of us, welcome. Welcome to National Westminster Bank USA. What a bummer. Another engine we can't mess up. How could Mobile do this to me? Yeah. Make their super unleaded gasoline that good. It's really powerful. High octane is so... <laughs> Knocking and pinging is becoming a lost art. Yeah. I just hope nobody else finds out how good their gasoline is. How could they find out? Mobile could make a television commercial. Yeah! yeah. Honey, remember when I promised you the world? Well, here we are. If you're 65 and over, Eastern has a new Get Up and Go passport. For only $11.99, you can fly coach everywhere Eastern flies in the continental U.S. and Canada for one year. And for an extra fee, you get Europe, South America, or the Middle East. But hurry, after December 31st, the price of our Get Up and Go passport goes up. Charlie, when I married you, I knew we'd be going places. <laughs> What does it take to excel? It takes speed, reliability, economy. It takes express mail next day service from the post office. We'll deliver your urgent packages overnight. And our two-pound pack is just $9.35, about half what most others charge. So next time, use the service that delivers over 100,000 packages on time every day. Express mail service. We deliver excellence for less. After one period at the Winnipeg Arena, the score, the Islanders won, the Winnipeg Jets nothing. The shots on goal in the period by Winnipeg 16, by the New York Islanders 7, and the only goal came at 8.53. Pat Flatley getting his seventh of the season from Tonelli and Brent Sutter. It's one to nothing Islanders. Three penalties called, two of them against the New York Islanders, the other to the Jets, Lundholm at 12.55. None of the penalties figuring in the scoring here tonight, so it's one to nothing after one period. Well, again, we invite you to take a look at the cover of the 1984-85 New York Islander yearbook. A beautiful piece. It's available now. This year's edition, along with a full-color photo of your favorite Islander, includes a special 12-page supplement commemorating the Islander's 12 years in the National Hockey League. To get your copy, here's what you do. Send a check or money order for $6. That includes postage and handling. The address is Islander's Yearbook, Sports Programs Incorporated, 4100 Palisade Avenue, Union City, New Jersey, 07087. As always, a lot of features, pictures, and, of course, the Islander yearbook, a keepsake. It's yours right now. All right, 18, your thoughts on that opening period? Pretty good period, I thought, again, Jiggs. Uh, not quite as... Uh not quite as intense, we'll say, as the Calgary opening period, but still uh, some pretty free skating, some good positional play. A little bit impressed. I'm somewhat impressed now with, uh, with Winnipeg in their own end of the ice. They covered pretty good. Just the one time that they made the mistake, John Tonelli got a good shot away. Pat, Pat, Pat Flatley got a, a good opportunity on the rebound. They should have taken Flatley instead of trying to fish for the puck, and they would have eliminated him and then, of course, eliminated the goal. But outside of that one mistake, Winnipeg played well in their own end of the ice. Billy Smith, I thought, looked pretty sharp for the Islanders. They're passing the puck. The Islanders are passing the puck extremely well tonight. Winnipeg with a lot of shots. And I think back to the Calgary game, too, especially the first period. The Flames had a lot of shots. 18, I believe it was. Tonight, 16 by Winnipeg. My uh, thinking is that that's too many shots to be giving up. Granted, some were from the point. But Bill Smith had to be extremely uh, busy here and thinking of what's going on here at other times. If you look at the 16 shots, Jigs, I think that right away you could take about eight of them that were from out in the blue line area. And they're not really troublesome. 
for Billy Smith other than maybe a screenshot, but the screen is going to come from so far out that, that he shouldn't really have too much trouble with it. So if you took the eight shots and out of the eight shots uh, that were maybe from the better area or from the higher slot area or from the sides, there were probably four or five that were real good tests for Smith. He had more hard saves to make than Howard down at the other end. Well, after one period, your score at the Winnipeg Arena, the Islanders won, the Jets nothing. Our intermission will continue following these messages. Some make greatness look simple, like the great Gretzky and Canon's new vision of photography, the inspiring T70 with the pure agility of touch button control and three distinct program modes. Now, Canon makes it simple to handle any shot. The inspiring Canon T70. It makes the great shot simple. Canon, the official camera of the New York Islanders. Every once in a while, something unexpected shows up. Hey, what's that, a Toyota? The 1985 Toyota Corolla GTS. A Toyota, dependable. A Corolla, affordable. A different kind of Corolla. A sleeper, a car for the street, powered by a new twin cam, electronically fuel-injected. What's he got in there? 16-valve engine. What's he got in there? Known as the TC-16. Yeah, what's he got in there? <laughs> Panasonic introduces a new lightweight video system that's so automatic, it works by itself. The Panasonic video camera focuses by itself, adjusts for changing light by itself, even works in extreme low light all by itself. This Panasonic VHS recorder connects almost by itself and plays back a jitter-free picture in slow motion and stop motion. Put in a pre-recorded movie and this Panasonic gives you hi-fi sound through your stereo. Sound so far superior to ordinary TV, it stands out by itself. Panasonic video systems, just slightly ahead of our time. Back at the Winnipeg Arena, a goal by Pat Flatley. His seventh of the season has the Islanders a one to nothing lead. My guest between periods, Anders Kaller. And Andy, something that I've always wanted to ask, and I suppose it's a little ridiculous in some ways because I've been through it like you're going through it. Do you ever get a feeling in the morning when the team has a skate, uh, the day of the game, how the team is going to play that night? Yeah, sometimes it works, you know. Uh, funny you mention it because this morning I talked to Stefan Pearson about it because we really uh, had an awful skate this morning everybody was missing passes and so on but if you look today at the first period we have been passing the puck uh, really good so it doesn't work the way you, you think it's gonna work every time you know would, would that would that uh, I mean if a coach is looking for something in the morning did the coach I mean would somebody uh, Brian Kilray in this case of course Brian Kilray standing in for Al Arbor in this hockey game like he did in Calgary. Now, would he get upset if things were not going well in the skate this morning, as you say they were? I don't think so, because uh, all the guys, you know, they have their individual uh, things they want to do in the morning. Some guys, they want to push it, and uh, some other guys, they just want to take it a little easy, you know, and save it for, for uh, later. So I, I think uh, the coach can't really... Uh, see anything from the morning skates rather than put you on the spot individually if you took a vote of all the players on the Islander team right now as to yes or no for the morning skate how many would you say would vote for and how many against I would say 75 percent would like to have the morning skates they would like to have the morning skate yeah how about yourself then some days I want to have it, you know, and some days I just want to relax from hockey. And do they ever make it optional? Yes, they do. <laughs> do you show up? Sometimes. <laughs> Hi, let me get, uh, you were just talking about the passing of the Islanders, how it didn't work so much uh, this morning. They do line rushes and a lot of passing drills in the morning skate, but here tonight they seem to pass the puck very crisp, seem to be on the move very good. They, everybody seems to be in stride. That's right. They look very good this morning, and... Uh, the ice is very good up here. They always have good ice, fast ice, and I don't know, maybe that's a, a factor too. And uh, Winnipeg is a really, uh, they always, it's a playing team, fast team. Kind of a team you like to play against? 
Yes, I like to play Winnipeg. <laughs> well, obviously you're not. I wanted to ask you also, were you down around the, the dressing room area? Just prior to the game, we saw Dennis Potvin out for uh, for the warm-ups, and then uh, he was not in the lineup. Uh, can you give us a little indication of what's going on with Dennis? Well, he pulled his growing, uh, not very much, though, but uh, enough not to take any chances to play. You know, I, I'm sure they want to rest him and have him ready for the uh, next game. Well, with seven defensemen, I guess it's not that crucial then, of course, in a game like this to have Dennis sitting out. Not really, because uh, all the seven guys we have back there, you know, is uh, top-class defensemen, so it uh, doesn't matter. I've always wanted to ask one of the other players, and I get an opportunity now. I'm talking with Anders Kaller of the Islanders, and, you know, when the team starts out on a four-game uh, four trip, and this is obviously a days, I think it's the longest road trip that the team has, um, do they look at the four games and say, you know, let's see if we can't win all four of them? Do they still take that approach? I'm sure, you know, especially... Uh, we try very hard to win the first one because that's a very important one to start a road trip, you know, good. But we lost it and uh, it's tough on the road. But I'm sure tonight, you know, uh, everybody really wants to win this this one very much. Are you uh, are you as impressed with uh, the team in Calgary and here in the first period with the uh, Winnipeg Jets? And there's the, uh, the Smythe division. I mean, we're so used to seeing uh, only one team, the Edmonton Oilers, are better than 500. They have four teams out of the five that are better than 500. Uh, what's your impressions of that? I think, uh, you know, Calgary. I was impressed with, uh, with Calgary. And uh, looking at the lineup now, uh, Winnipeg's lineup, you know, I'm, pr I'm impressed with them. And they have a really, really good skating team. You still get the feeling that every time the Islanders uh, go out to play somebody, you're going to get the best game from them? I think so. I, I think it's something special. Uh, I, I talk to the two guys from other team, you know, and uh, they think it's something special to beat us. So I'm sure they get, uh, you know, extra uh, up for games against us. When did you find out you weren't going to play? I found out this morning. At least they give you that, uh, at least that much leeway. Isn't it some nights that they wait until the warm-ups before they tell you if you're not going to dress? Oh, yeah, it's different. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, it, it depends on the injuries. You know, they have to wait until the game time to see how the player feels. Anders, I want to thank you for coming by. We'll look forward to seeing you in the game, hopefully against Vancouver. And, of course, everybody likes to play against the Edmonton Oilers. That's right. We look forward to that game. All right. Thanks. Anders Cal of the New York Islanders. Now let's go back over to Jake's McDonald. All right, Eddie, tonight's guest receives from Fortunoff, the source, a Seiko Quartz Watch. See Seiko's winning combination of quartz accuracy and unique styling at Fortunoff, the source. Seiko setting the standard for the world for the future. A Pat Flatley goal as the Islanders up one to nothing over the Winnipeg Jets will return to the Winnipeg Arena right after this message. This buzz for everyone who scrapes it, sprays it, and lays it on smooth. Just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This Bud's for you. It first appeared last January at the Greater Cincinnati International Airport. Then it arrived in Los Angeles, and in Memphis, and New York. The AT&T card caller phone, with an exclusive video display screen. The card caller can be used with the AT&T card. It's easier and faster to make calls because the phone does most of the work. Soon it will be coming to airports and hotels across America. The AT&T card caller phone. The advantage is plain to see. Taxi! Over 19 million times a year, people take off with us to cities all across America. Maybe it's because we can take them to more places than American, TWA, United, and Delta combined. What? Or maybe they just like taking off without leaving the ground. All aboard, all aboard, all aboard Amtrak. Take Amtrak now and take advantage of our All Aboard America fares. After 18 holes on a hot afternoon, you probably think I'd shower with a deodorant soap. Not a chance. I'm Keith Fergus, and I made a break from deodorant soap. A clean break with ivory. Look inside. Ivory's a basic, natural soap. And I like that. What I don't like are soaps that cover up clean with deodorants or heavy perfumes. I don't want that stuff all over me. With ivory, I feel like there's nothing on me but clean. I can feel it 
I can smell it. I call that an honest clean. Make a clean break with Ivory. No soap can get you cleaner. Jake's McDonald and Ed Westfall back at the Winnipeg Arena waiting the return of the two teams. Islanders leading one to nothing as we await the start of the second period. You can plan a visit for your group or organization to the Nassau Coliseum this season and catch all the exciting action of National Hockey League play. There are good seats still available for most remaining home games for groups of 25 or more. Tickets are priced at $16.50 and $12 for a group of that size. Don't delay. First thing Monday, contact the Islanders Group Sales Office, area code 516-794-4100, or by mail, Nassau Coliseum, Uniondale, New York, zip code 11553. Well, Jonathan's jet set life is plunged into darkness when an emotionally disturbed man prepares revenge. Don't miss Heart to Heart, Monday at 6, here on Channel 9. Well, I thought that was your job, A.T. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you stole it again. No, uh, I just wanted to go down and make sure that uh, at the end of our, at the end of the second period, our second intermission, have a uh, one-time New York Ranger going to come by and talk to us. Now, uh, I think he's in the investment. We'll have to ask him. I think he does some investment, works uh, not so much as a whole agent kind of person, but he does help some of the players with some of their investments. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll ask him and find out. Ted Irvin. All right. One of the original Los Angeles Kings. Yes. Too. Do you know what else? The Moose. Yeah. The Moose. Talking about upcoming things. The Islanders on WOR TV Sports. Join us as we bring you the game from Vancouver, Monday, December the 3rd at 10.30. And then on Wednesday, December the 5th, Edmonton at 9.30. I haven't heard any report on the weather back in the New York area, but it was a perfect winter day here in Winnipeg. You know what I learned today about weather? We were talking about it earlier today, that when it's minus, it was minus 6 and 7 here Celsius. Do you know that that's the same Fahrenheit when it goes minus? I heard that on the radio today. I don't believe that for one minute. You don't? No. Well, the guy on the radio steered me wrong. <laughs> now, that's, that's a... Minus 7 under the freezing point of 32, so that would work out to uh, about 18, 20 degrees above zero Fahrenheit. The okay. only reason I brought it up was because they were talking about the coldest place in Canada. It was minus 47 degrees Celsius up in the Northwest Territories, and they said that's the same Fahrenheit as it is in Celsius. Now, I, I just translate that as being darn cold. <laughs> <laughs> the second period is underway with the Jets moving in offside. Spale getting all alone and coming in on the right side. But the faceoff moves outside the line. These Winnipeg Jets come to the Nassau Coliseum twice this season. First game will be Tuesday, December 18th, and they're back again on Thursday, February 21st, if you'd like to make note of that schedule. Islanders in the first period. Had seven shots, and all seven shots were by seven different players. No one had two shots. You know Brian or Henry from Thunder Bay? Not really. I guess they know a lot of members of the Islander Booster Club and wanted to come by and say hello. Couldn't get out here on this platform of ours. So we've done it for them, huh? LaFontaine with the puck at center ice. They shot it into the Winnipeg zone. Dwayne Sutter goes in after it. Right up back of the net, it went off McLean. LaFontaine digs it off the boards. Fires one off the right pad of Hayward. Here's LaFontaine again trying to put it out in front. Fell. Dwayne Sutter picks up the puck. Is checked by Mullen. Mullen off the boards, and Janssen takes over at center ice. Gillies came back for it. Mark Gillies to LaFontaine. Stick handles his way into the Winnipeg end of the ice. LaFontaine trying to get around Mullen does. Hooks it back of the net to Gillies. Gillies is checked by Kite, and Howard Chuck clears it off the stick and down into the Islander zone. It does not get far enough in time for an icing call, and Thomas Johnson has it. Johnson's pass went off Howard Chuck and up into the seats, so there'll be a faceoff in the Islander zone. Watching number six, Jim Kite, check Clark Gillies. There's Clark on the Islander bench now. He's got quite a presence when he's out on the ice, Jigs. Six foot five, he's 210 pounds. 20 years old from Ottawa, Ontario. Just 20. Six foot five. Hmm. That's a lot to lean on you. 
We were here last season. I recall an article on Kite and the fact that he has a loss of the hearing in one ear. They were commenting on how difficult it must be to hear teammates and follow instructions, that type of thing. It does not affect your balance a little? Well, it's supposed to. It doesn't seem to affect his so far. He's played very well. The Islanders are going to be called for having iced the puck as Ellett gets back in time to touch up. He was the Jets, talking about Jim Kite. He was the Jets' first pick in 1982. A break in the action here in the second period. The Islanders won. The Winnipeg Jets, nothing will return in a moment. This bud's for everyone who takes the power and sends it down the line. This bud's for you. Distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this bud's for you. Face off to the left of the Islander goal. Boschman against Brent Sutter on the draw. They get Boschman squared around. He turns, and the linesman. Ron Forsey elects to throw both of them out of the faceoff. So now Tonelli and Turnbull, a pair of 27s, take this draw. Tonelli, who was originally a centerman, got it to Lane, up the right side to Flatley. It's held in at the line. Arneal shot. That skipped wide. Smith has started to go down, and it was deflected and picked up now by Brent Sutter. Pass blocked at center. Boschman pokes it in over the Islander line. Lane banks it off the boards. Boudelier ties up his man, and Lane goes for the puck. Long pass to Brent Sutter, trying to commit around Kite. Gave it to Flatley, and his shot was steered aside. Brent Sutter with it back in the net. Gets away from a check, comes to the corner, gave it to Lane, and he shot it wide. Tonelli goes after it, can't get there in time, and up comes Perry Turnbull. Turnbull's the Islander line, but behind the play, a penalty. Boudelier knocked down by Boschman, and Laurie Boschman gets an interference penalty. In the center ice area, not a good place to be taking a penalty. He took Boudelier down. There you are. Boom, down goes Boudelier. Boston, Boston gets the penalty. Trying to open up the lane for his left winger. Interference to Boschman, and the Islanders get their second power play opportunity of the game. Boschman, an original Toronto Maple Leaf. Well, not an original Leaf. He played there when he broke into the National Hockey League. Harold Ballard didn't like his views on life. Toronto's first pick in 79, Jake, from Major Saskatchewan. Went to Edmonton for Walt Podubny and then over to Winnipeg for Willie Lindstrom. I guess everybody in Toronto is on the trading block now. Ooh. According to their coach. Have anybody you want for the right deal on that Toronto Maple Leaf team. Anybody there you want, 18, start your own team? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to start my own team. Oh, all right. <laughs> Keep kidding, that uh, vibe. Scores 50 goals every year for Toronto. Here's a break for Smale in the Islander end, but Pearson came over to knock it off his stick. Smale around to Wilson. It'll be picked up instead by Gillies, and the Islanders start out on the power play. Gillies, Trotje, and Bossy across the Winnipeg line. The pass to Bossy was into his skates. Back to Janssen now. Thomas Janssen cuts to the right side. Holds on to the puck, feeds it back to Bossy. His shot got through and cleared by Hayward. And the Jets end up dumping it down the board. 56 seconds gone in the Islander power play. One to nothing. Pat Flatley's goal as the Islanders up. Janssen played it off Picard. Tonelli sends Brent Sutter in. Let's it go, and he just missed on the stick hand side. Bossy feeds it to Pearson at the point. In along the boards, but Carlisle moves over. Couldn't clear it out. Don Tonelli's effort to keep it in the Winnipeg zone was deflected into the seat. Something interesting here in Winnipeg, Jigs, is the fact that the glass isn't nearly as high as a lot of the rinks that we're used to seeing. That puck I just automatically felt would stay in play. The Islanders had a couple of the penalty killers of the Winnipeg Jets out of position, but the puck flipped over the board. John Tonelli standing over the boards. The glass is lower than his chin, which is much lower than most of the rinks today. They've all got the glass at least Oh, I'd say eight to ten feet around the edges and then even higher around the back of the ends of the ends of the rink. I think that's the way it should be. The higher glass and the side boards keeps play going. Saves a lot of fans from being hurt, too, with flying pucks. Waters gets over the line, but offside. We now have 27 seconds remaining in this power play. Brian Kilray has reunited the Canada Cup line. Brent Sutter, John Tonelli, and Mike Bossy on the power play. Although Flatley now is 
coming out on the ice to replace Bossy. Played just over four minutes of the second period. Brent Sutter and Ron Wilson on the faceoff. Sinelli gets it back to Boudelier. Now to Pearson. Pearson in the zone zone across to Boudelier. Boudelier's pass hits fail. Ends up at the Winnipeg blue line. Waters clears it. It's blocked by Boudelier at center. Now dumped back into the blue line area for Pearson. Pulled it away from Smale. Tried the right side, Flatley, and Brent Sutter couldn't get it across the Winnipeg blue line. Flatley tries it again, this time to Tonelli. Steps over the line, checked by Waters. Boudelier came in, and his pass was cut off. The teams are at six aside as Boschman has stepped out of the penalty box. Fifth clears the puck to the corner for Boudelier. Plays it behind the net to Pearson. Smale bumped him, and Flatley takes over with a pass for Tonelli. Hands encouraging their Winnipeg Jets. Tonelli unable to handle the puck at the blue line. Boudelier knocks it down. Trying to wait for Tonelli and Brent Sutter to get back on side. And he was checked. Here's McLean over the line on right wing. Let's it go. Spits the glove save and drops it off for Diddock. Gerald Diddock banks one off the boards. It's going the length of the ice. It's out in front of the net. There's Babbage to touch up. And we get an icing call against the Islanders. A break in the action. Little less than 15 minutes to play in period two. The Islanders lead the Jets. One to nothing. Germany, Britain, Japan, Sweden, France, Italy. You have questioned America's ability to create a high-performance luxury automobile. Here's America's answer. The 1985 98 Oldsmobile. 98? Front-wheel drive. Multi-port fuel-injected engine. Four-wheel independent suspension. The 1985 98. Now, that's America's answer. Special day here. I guess this is in Canada, not just here. It's a kind yeah. of a recognition thing in Canada. Scots, we, we, hey, we, Wallace Blaine. Yeah. Got things that like that. Yeah. Today is St. Andrew's Day. Longevin went down to block his shot from Steen, and the Islanders move up. We'll talk more about that. It's scoring, and Bourne get across the line with Helene. Bourne got slowed up with a check, and Steen is ridden into the end boards by Matt Helene. It comes out to Bourne, and his shot was on target, handled by Hayward. And there's Jim Kite moving it to the left side. Lukowicz, a long pass off McVeigh's stick. Longevin and McVeigh collide, and it's Longevin coming up with the puck and then ends up in the deck, and the puck is beneath him. A lot of wearing of the kilt today in Winnipeg and across Canada, really. Some 600 gentlemen gathered this evening at the hotel in which uh, we're. with us. Lord Lane has dumped it down the ice. In the meantime, we've got an injured Jet. Out on the ice, back at his blue line is Brian Mullen. I didn't see him get hit, but obviously he got cranked. I think he, he, have been he was near. There he goes. He's upended by Paul Boudelier. Come down heavily on the ice, favoring his left leg, Jake. Maybe we can take another look if we get a chance at that replay you could see him he went flying through the air as they attend to his left leg of number 19 Brian Mullen of course he's a native of New York there right here he jumped in the air caught his left knee I think when he banged it down onto the ice is when he did most of the damage 
We'll have to wait and pass on any information. A break in the action here at the Winnipeg Arena. The Islanders still leading the Winnipeg Jets one to nothing. We'll be back in a moment. Whether your company has a few employees or thousands, welcome. Welcome to National Westminster Bank USA. We're eager to meet the needs of growing companies. As part of an $85 billion connection, we're serving some of America's largest companies. And our worldwide resources are available to meet your international needs. So from all of us, welcome. Welcome to National Westminster Bank USA. Mullen has gone right to the Winnipeg dressing room. We'll see if we can get a report later on after they have made an initial diagnosis. Meantime, Boudelier and Lane together on the Islanders' defense. Gillies out with LaFontaine and Dwayne Sutter. It's Boudelier and Lane on defense. Howard Chuck trying to move in on the right side. Plays it across. McLean goes for the puck. Holds on to it. Setters. There's Howard Chuck. He shoots. He scores. Things revved up after Joey Mullen got injured. Let's take a look as the pass comes off the board from Wilson to Howard Chuck. He tipped it between the legs of Billy Smith. There's the pass in front. There's Howard Chuck, dangerous. He's led the Winnipeg Jets in scoring for the three years he's been here, and he leads them this year. Bill Howard Chuck on a fine tip-in right in front of Billy Smith. McLean, who made the initial pass off the boards, getting an assist. Now Steen with a shot from the point that goes wide of the net. Rossi going for the puck, gets checked on the wing. Comes right back to Carlisle, moves in deeper, held it, and fed it to Lundholm, who set it to spell, and his shot went wide. Now Trache goes to the corner. Mail picks it up on the boards, put it out in front, but Pearson cut it off and has played it to the left side for Greg Gilbert. To Trotje. Spots Bossy open at center ice. Right back to Trotje into the Winnipeg end. Trotje feeds it through in front, and Gilbert unable to get there in time. Bossy has given it to Greg Gilbert. Put it out in front. Trotje can't get the backhander, and it was knocked away from Bossy. He was cruising it off the wing. This is Lundholm at the Islander line. The pass to Spale. Drops it to Steen. Let's it go. Smith just got a piece of that. Comes off the left wing for Gilbert. Greg Gilbert steps over center ice. Into the Winnipeg zone with a pass to Bossy. It's being called back on an offside. Greg Gilbert. A couple of good moves as he lugs the puck out of the Islanders' end of the ice. Here's a shot by Winnipeg a moment ago. Pretty good shot. Billy Smith getting a piece of the puck as it went to his left. No question, the Winnipeg Jets kind of picked everything up, started to carry the play to the Islanders after Paul Boudelier knocked Joe Mullen down. Strange bounce of the puck has given the Islanders possession in the Winnipeg zone. Tonelli with it now. Turns in the corner, gives it to Flatley. He was unable to pick it up, chases it to the corner with Waters. Waters gets knocked down on a hit from Flatley. In the meantime, Gilbert... Back to the blue line. Did it over to Tonelli, and his relay goes off Arneal's stick. Arneal comes to center. The Islander line plays it into the corner, and Didick hustles back. Daryl Didick trying to come around to the right wing. Flatley went into the boards back first rather heavily. In the meantime, Tonelli has the puck. Tonelli and Waters bumping. The puck loose back to the net. Brent Sutter gets a stick on it. Tied up by Boschman. Tonelli there to help out. Docker's now the puck back and forth behind the goal, and now it's underneath John Tonelli, and play has been called. Let me quickly correct myself. I said Joey Jiggs. It's Brian Mullen that plays here for the Winnipeg Jets, not his brother, who is with St. Louis. Flatley, a moment ago, tripped up just short of the end board. He was moving quickly towards the end board. He got spun around, lost his balance, and went backwards into the board heavily. Obviously didn't get shaken up too bad. There he is going back to the Islander bench. A 1-1 tie in Winnipeg. Pat Flatley scored in the first period. Dale Howardchuk has scored here in the second period. St. Louis defeated Detroit 5-3 earlier tonight. And the Edmonton Oilers defeated Hartford 4-2 in a game at Hartford. 
Bourne with the puck to Boudelier's shot just wide of Brian Hayward. Lane comes in on the left side, gave it to Bourne. Bourne can't center it from back of the net. Goring picks it up. Butch Goring treads the needle in front. It's under the pads of Hayward. Goring trying to get one of those ricochets, and now everybody converges in front of the Winnipeg net. I said at the outset tonight that Butch Goring may well be playing, or I guess I did say he'd be playing his last game as a professional here in this arena. Let's watch him. Behind the net, Bourne tries to put it in front. Didn't make it. Here's Butch Goring coming out from the side of the net. Tried to ricochet it off a of foot. Tried to get it to Matsaline. Anything just to get something going for the Islanders. We've seen the Jets tie the score here a moment ago. Butch Goring is indicated he hasn't said it officially but this could very well be his last season caught me kind of unawares when you mentioned that at the beginning of the game but I understand exactly what you're saying with the Islanders only playing once this season here in the Winnipeg arena unless they played them in the Stanley Cup finals and wouldn't that upset the people in Edmonton <laughs> Aline gets away from a check trying to get in deeper bump back of the net by Babbage the puck loose Babbage lost it to Bourne out to Boudelier he shoots he scores Boudelier left unprotected for what seemed a long period of time as they chased after the puck carrier. There's Bourne. Puts it on the stick of Paul Boudelier. There's his shot in the short side. Perfect shot by Paul Boudelier. Regains a one-goal lead. Boudelier, his eighth goal now of the season, turning into quite a sharpshooter. Each time he gets the puck around that net, he starts to remind you a little bit of Bossy. He hits the net regularly in that time putting it in the short side over the catching mitt of Brian Hayward and it's two to one Islanders if you joined us late the Islanders are without captain Denny Potvin tonight he did take the warm-up but has a slight groin pull that has kept him on the sidelines Wayne Sutter carrying the puck into the Winnipeg zone gave it to Gillies back to Janssen over it goes to Pearson on the right side and he shot it wide it comes back outside the line Ended up in the skates of the linesman and is taken by Arneal. Comes over the line with Boschman and then Arneal drilled it wide. Scott Arneal lets it go to the blue line. A long shot from Ellett was blocked in front and there's Pearson giving it to Gillies. Missed Wayne Sutter with the relay. Ends up back at the Winnipeg goal and as Ellett goes back we have an icing call against the New York Islanders. There's a break in the action. This game coming to you from the Winnipeg Arena. The Islanders lead 2-1. to one. Which of these oils gives you the best engine protection under the toughest driving conditions, sub-zero cold or blazing heat? This one, Mobile One. Now, buy five quarts of Mobile One in this easy-pour plastic container, and Mobile will send you a $5 rebate on the motor oil that gives your engine extra protection. Now, for less money. Ryan Trache under Steen on the faceoff for Winnipeg. The puck drop goes off the stick of Bourne and Longevin moves it to right wing. Bossy unable to control it. Spale takes it from Carlisle and dumps it back of the net. Overcomes Steen. Bourne is there for the Islanders. Spale gives it to Picard and a shot from the blue line deflected wide. Bossy on right wing picks it up and starts out. Carries the puck over center. Played it off the defenseman Picard. Got knocked down, but managed to flip it down into the Islanders' zone. Steen and Langevin there together, and Gilbert came back, knocking it away from Lundholm. Bill Smith cradling it back in the net and gave it to Dillock. Ahead to Trotje. Trotje comes down the left side, dumps it into the corner. Bossy and Spale chasing it. Spale trying to go back in the net is checked, but Picard there to help out. He's upended by Trotje, falls on top of it, and there's no further play. Don't miss the fireworks when the story of Sue Ellen's baby hits the newspapers. Monday at 7 on Dallas, right here on Channel 9. Woo. You the suppose? fireworks are breaking Sue Ellen's baby. You suppose Sue Ellen's baby has a Cabbage Patch Kid? <laughs> I know a guy that... Well, no. Uh, don't get started on those things. Cabbage Patch Kids. We were all over the streets of Winnipeg looking for those things today. Our producer, director... Troublemaker most times. Whoop, Bill Smith down to make the stop in the Islander into the ice, and the puck has ended up in the glove of Billy Smith. Yeah. Everybody racing around trying to find it. 
Billy Smith says, I'm not telling. Here come the Winnipeg Jets across the line. There's a hard shot by Smale. There's the rebound. There's Smith. He scoops it up into his mitt. He didn't know he had it at first either. Everybody was looking around thinking it was gone into the corner of the rink. It's in the webbing of the catching mitt of Billy Smith. You don't want to continue the Cabbage Patch Kid story, I guess, huh? Oh, you mean Mr. Webb and his hunt? <laughs> Man. Well, that was a I treat. Know, I must, well, we must have walked 20 miles today. Well, tough price with, to pay. With a certain degree <laughs> of success, I might add. <laughs> Better after all that. I don't think they were legit, though. Flatley has fired the puck around the boards, and Babbage chases it for Winnipeg. There's Tonelli putting it across in front. Flatley picks it up over on right wing. Gave it to Brent Sutter. Unable to center. A good defensive play by Howarchuk, breaking that up. Cleared it to center. Mullen, who had gone to the Winnipeg dressing room earlier, is back out on the ice. Here's Brent Sutter playing it through to the right wing. Flatley chasing it. Flatley and McLean bumping. The puck sprung loose. And Kite works it up the left side for Winnipeg. Howard Chuck gets over the blue line. Howard Chuck centers one. Mullen tipped it and off the right pad of Smith. The Islanders got away with one. They took some liberties with Brian Mullen. Here's Mullen again. The kid from Hell's Kitchen unable to center it. And Bill Smith clears it around the board. Babbage fires one high and wide. It comes to the left wing for Tonelli. Banks it out into the center ice zone. Babbage has it there. Just over eight minutes remaining in the second period as the Jets dump it in and chase it. Back quickly is Janssen. Up the left side, Fortunelli relayed it neatly to Brent Sutter, and the long shot is grabbed by Hayward. Plays it up the left side to Turnbull. Gary Turnbull, who came over here in an off-season deal with Montreal, just dumped it to center ice. LaFontaine sends Dwayne Sutter to the Winnipeg line, but no further. Did it now to Dwayne Sutter. Had to reach behind. The puck goes loose. Turnbull is checked. LaFontaine goes after it. And ran into Ellett. Wayne Sutter picks up the puck. Sutter to LaFontaine. Shoots and it went wide on the stick side. Waters bumped by LaFontaine who gives the puck to Gillies. Mark Gillies to Dwayne Sutter and he ran into Ellett. Well, back comes Turnbull down the left side as Arneal with him. Two on two. Turnbull faked the shot. Drop pass. Arneal drills one. Stripped the save. Loose puck in front. Boston shot it wide. He had Smith trying to get back into position and missed the net. Wayne Sutter over on right wing. Can't get a stick on it. Ellett fires one from the point that goes wide. Here's Waters coming in on the right side. Waters centers loose in front. Arneal shoots. Smith the save. And Gillies clears it out to center ice. Coming back is Ellett. Winnipeg putting on pressure. Looking for the equalizer. Late in the second period, the Islanders lead it 2-1. to one. Longevin has fired it up left wing, out of the reach of Goring. Babbage will get back with plenty of time to spare. David Babbage around the board. Bourne unable to get a stick on it. Howarchuk has it for Winnipeg. Gave it to Mullen. Mullen checked at the blue line. McLean followed through, but he couldn't get around Lane. Babbage has it at center ice. Shot it up in the air. Ends up in the corner to the right of Smith. He slaps it around the glass to Bourne. Now to Goring, who's got a break. Two on one. Helene moves up with Goring. Goring couldn't get it to Helene, and it bounces to Hayward as he covered up on the left side. The Islanders return to Channel 9 Monday night to challenge the Vancouver Canucks. Don't miss the action right here on Channel 9, your sports station. That's number 29, the goaltender, Mark Barron, sitting on the bench. Best seat in the house, goaltenders will always tell you. A Wisconsin native, played in the U.S. Olympic team last year. Winnipeg with 24 shots on goal to the stage of the game. The Islanders have had only 11. The Islanders lead it 2-1. to one. Loose pocket center ice picked up by Mullen, but he is offside. Mullen. Islanders had nine in the first period, Jakes, excuse me. Mullen and Helene into a deep conversation. Now a break in the action with the Islanders leading the Jets 2-1. to one. There's a major difference between these two airline seats. This one is from a major airline, Eastern. This one isn't. In this seat, you get a big, comfortable, wide body, a great meal or snack, a movie, and something else. Up front, you get a captain with an average of 23 years' experience. In that seat, you don't. Knowing all this, which seat would you be more comfortable in? Now you can fly Eastern to Florida for only $99. 
Face off coming just inside the Winnipeg Blue Line. Trottier, Gilbert, and Bossy out for the Islanders against the line of Steele. Uh, Steele, I should say. Lundholm and Steen for Winnipeg. This is Gilbert. The pass to Bossy. Now to Trottier. Trottier shoots it in off the boards. Hayward moves out of the net to cut it off for Picard and then played it out of his reach. But he did get it to the left side. Spale has given the puck to Picard. Robert Picard over the Islander line. Picard centers it in front. Spale was too well covered. One hands it in front, and Smith makes a good stop on Steen and then dives out this front of the puck. He's called to play it. Referee Fournier yelled at him to play it. Smith, he wanted to, but the Jets were right there, and he got the whistle and no delay of the game penalty, which he was vulnerable for at that point. Now, they got some help from the Winnipeg Jets, Jags, as they battle in front. There's a beautiful backhand, uh, one-handed pass. There's a stop by Smith off Steen. Now he runs out, grabs it. There's no Winnipeg Jets around him. You see his head turn? He turned quickly. The referee was yelling at him to unload the puck. So he'd have to give him a penalty. But just as his head went up, looking at the referee, one of the Winnipeg Jets skated in close to him, Lundholm. That, of course, allowed him to hang on to the puck. Brian Kilray has sent out a line of Brian Trache, Mike Bossy, and Bob Bourne for the Islanders. Janssen and Pearson together on defense. Janssen has played it across to Pearson. To Bourne. Bourne knocks it away from Steen. Gave it to Trache. It's cleared right back inside the Islanders' zone. Janssen turns and slaps it to center ice. That's Picard. Didn't wait long enough for Spale to get back on side, and Winnipeg will have been called with five minutes and seven seconds left in the second period. Another final score, Montreal and Buffalo played an overtime tie at Buffalo, 2-2. Do they do? Say, your boy, a couple of days well, in Canada will get you going on the uh, French. Yeah, they don't speak a French up here in Winnipeg. Well, there's a little bit, I suppose. It's not as prevalent as you might find it back in the East, but you are bilingual, are you not? <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Actually, you're trilingual. You speak yeah. Scottish, yeah. Gaelic, yeah, sure. Earth, if you will. Sure. You gotta be kidding. <laughs> Diddick has shot the puck into the Islander, the Winnipeg end, and Waters lays it up the right wing out of the reach of Arneal. Here's Longevin dropping it back in for Flatley in front to Brent Sutter. He shoots and was blocked at the defense as Ellett came across and a good play for Winnipeg. Now Boschman sends Turnbull over the line. The drive hits the side of the net. Turnbull trying to center it again. as Arneal was knocked down by Flatley, and the Jets will enjoy a power play. A hooking penalty to Pat Flatley right beside Billy Nip Smith and his net as he pulled Arneal down. He's not happy about it. Here come the Winnipeg Jets once again. Look at the shot right between the feet. Islanders get a break there. Billy Smith got enough of it. Watch just to the left of Billy Smith. Right here, here comes Flatley. Arneal trying to get away from him. The puck come over to the side of the net. Flatley pulled him down. You see the arm of the referee in the air signaling a penalty to Pat Flatley. Earlier in this period, Boschman went off for interference, and the Islanders unable to do any business with the power play. We'll see what the Jets are able to muster now. The Islander forwards will be Bourne and Goring with Pearson and Janssen on defense. Howard Chuck between Mullen and McLean for Winnipeg. They get it back to Babbage. Plays it to the corner. McLean checked there by Pearson. Howard Chuck in to knock it loose. Mullen chases it to this near wing. Ryan Mullen checks out some options. He likes to go to the corner, and Janssen deflected it. It comes back to Mullen. To the point for Babbage into Mullen. Mullen back to Babbage, and it's intercepted by Bourne. He's given the puck to Janssen. Johnson sends Goring in over the line, and Carlisle slowed him up. Hayward plays it around to the right side. This is Mullen. Works on Johnson at the Islander line. Got through, but the puck out of his reach, and Bill Smith gives it to Brian Trotche. He dumps it the length of the ice. One of the values of Billy Smith, he's so good with the puck around his net, Jake. You see how he handled the puck, giving it to Trotche. The puck ends up down the ice. And what could have been a dangerous play turned out to be harmless. Now 65 seconds left in the Winnipeg power play as they dumped it in this time. Turnbull loses it to Pearson. To Janssen. Slaps it up the left wing. Babbage gets a stick on it. Couldn't set up Howard Chuck who was coming out of the corner. 
Now it comes back to the point. Babbage lets it go. Smith the save. Howard Chuck waits for it to land and gives it to Ellett. Ellett checked by Gilbert, who breaks down the right side. Ellett trying to catch up. Gilbert trying to cut inside is given the puck to Trotje. Trotje goes back in the net with it. Still behind the net. Played it out in front, and Gilbert checked at the last second. He was in great position, but it didn't work. And here the Jets over the line. Three on two. The pass to Boschman. Back to Turnbull. He shoots. Smith makes the save. No puck. Turnbull fires it high and wide. He had virtually an empty net and missed. 24 square feet of twine. That's twice this period the Winnipeg Jets have done the same thing, Jiggs. They've had opportunities, but they haven't taken advantage of them. Now five seconds remaining in the penalty time to Flatley. Waters shoots it in around the boards. Phil Smith leaves it for Gord Lane. Lane's pass hit Boudelier and ends up back in the net. Boudelier tries the left side, teams at six aside, and back comes Waters. He's checked by Tonelli. Tonelli and Flatley over the line with Brent Sutter. Flatley comes in off the wing, shoots, he scores! Flatley second of the night, it's three to one. It's happened again. Winnipeg gets a golden opportunity. You can't get them any better. Flatley comes right back down to the other end. And look at the pretty shot by Pat Flatley in the top right-hand corner. At this point, John Tonelli is there. Here comes Flatley. It's a three-on-one break with Brent Sutter standing off to the left side of the net on the left side of the goaltender. Pat Flatley, his second goal of the game, his ninth of the season, excuse me, his eighth of the season, has given the Islanders a three to one lead. Pretty play by Flatley, who had the option of making a pass, but decided he had the best opportunity to put it in and made the right move. The Islanders have had only five shots on goal this period, but with a break in the action, they lead the Winnipeg Jets three to one. Rock and roll. Who says you can't taste life without it taking its toll? Milk and Oh, yes, you can. Milk and Oh, yes, you can. Make a load light. Super premium taste in a less filling beer. Make a load light. Oh, yes, you can. Have it all. Face off in the Winnipeg end of the ice. Butch Goring to take the draw against Lori Boschman. Bossy and Bourne are the other forwards for the Islanders. And Brian Kilray hasn't been around Al Arbor that much, but he's picked up a lot juggling these lines, moving people in and out of different situations. I always think of that, Jigs, a little bit like the play of Jimmy Brown with the Cleveland Browns for years. He said he got up slow and walked back to the huddle slow because no one ever knew whether or not they hurt him on a tackle. Al Arbor, you could say maybe he juggled the lines around. He wasn't sure of the players' names, wasn't sure of the lines he wanted, so he just threw anybody out there. Who's to say any different? Uh, <laughs> gotta have fun in this business. Yeah, you must. Listen, we if you didn't, you'd go off the deep yeah. end, wouldn't you? We have public services announcement, announcements on Channel 9. We have a personal announcement. Anybody writes a pretty letter like this? Colleen Henson, her family, Oceanside, Long Island. I always watch the Islanders. All right. So we'll save her a phone call it's very expensive from here back to oceanside to say hello to her mother and father her family anyway and her whole family colleen hansen ball start on the face off as the jets moved in too quickly you know a lot of these fans that are here at the game in winnipeg tonight are going to be in minnesota to watch the islanders and the north stars on new year's eve the winnipeg jets have a large contingent of their booster club hooking up with a large group of the atlanta flames booster club the old fan, fan club from Atlanta in Minneapolis, New Year's Eve. There's another public service announcement. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, well done, Jakes. Bossy gets the puck to Diddick at the blue line, and his shot went off the skate. Goring ties up Waters, and they freeze it on the boards, but not long enough for a faceoff. There's Bossy going back in the net. Put it right through the goal mouth. Dedek moves in, knocks it away from Boschman, golfs it toward the front of the net, but it's cleared out by Babbage. Longevin waits at center ice, shot it in offside, and play is called. A minute and 43 seconds left here in the second period. Apollo and Starbuck discover a dis direct link with Earth when they intercept a primitive starship floating through space. An exciting two-part adventure comes your way Saturday and Sunday at 6 on Battlestar Galactica here on Channel 9. Apollo and Starbuck. 
Sounds like a couple of friends of yours, Jake. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Earlier tonight, Edmonton defeated Hartford 4-2. St. Louis beat Detroit 5-3. Montreal and Buffalo tied 2-2. And again, the Islanders offside as they go into the Winnipeg zone. There was one other game. The Rangers and the Maple Leafs were awaiting a final score on that one. Winnipeg Jets. 11-8-2. 11 wins, 8 losses, and 2 ties coming into tonight's game with a .571 winning percentage most of those wins on the road well five of them on six is it on the road yeah six wins three losses and a tie on the road here's Dwayne Sutter with an opportunity held the puck and couldn't get around waters Tim waters the Mullen he shoots it down the ice Johnson chasing it for the Islanders the playing comes in quickly Johnson has given it to Pearson now to the open wing LaFontaine has it for the Islanders Gives it to Dwayne Sutter, steps over the line, working on Picard, centered it. Gillies will pick it up in the far wing, centered it in front, but out of the reach of LaFontaine. A minute remaining in period two. McLean into the Islander end. That's the shot go. It was deflected. Smith made the save, and Dwayne Sutter ran into Picard in his clearing attempt. Smith without the helmet and mask, and Dwayne Sutter's shot hit the referee on the left leg. He is dancing to a different beat right now, and Janssen has cleared the puck up into the seats. Play is called with 40 seconds left. Smith gets his helmet and mask, and Fournier, the referee, gets to skate off the Hurts. There's McLean shot, deflected. Smith, good stop by Billy Smith. Couldn't control the rebound. There's the the card as he comes in. He run into Smith as they try to untangle the helmet and mask of Smith. Come off. Sutter had ripped the puck around the boards in the direction you saw them all looking. The puck hit the referee on the left leg. And he is dancing a little bit. Seems to be all right. He's nodding to the linesman. Mr. Ron Fournier, the referee tonight. The Islanders led one to nothing at the end of the first period. Winnipeg pulled even early in the second. And the Islanders have come back with a pair. They're up three to one. They start out of their own zone, led by Flatley. Good pass for Tonelli. Across the Winnipeg line, Brent Sutter headed for the front of the net, had to go to the corner to get a stick on the puck and collided there with Ellett. Comes out of the corner with a shot. Hayward the save. This is Flatley. At Flatley, pulls it away from Steen, tries to come in off left wing, got checked, and up come the Jets. Fail at center ice. The Islander line was poke checked by Lane. Lord Lane to Tonelli. John Tonelli from the blue line fires when he scores! Oh, he just drilled one, the full 80 feet from the blue line into the top left corner of the net. It's four to one. Disappointing for the fans here. Elation for the Islanders. Tonelli just crossed the blue line. Hayward blew the shot. What should have been a routine, easy catch for him. He misjudged it. And it went over his left hand into the net. John Tonelli with only seven seconds remaining in the second period. Blue. A shot from the blue line by Brian Hayward. That hurts a team like Winnipeg, a young team. They were not out of this game by any means, down three to one in their own building. They had clearly outplayed the Islanders in the second period, but not had had not outscored them. Tonelli's goal with seven seconds left in the period has made it four to one as the period comes to a close and they head for the dressing rooms. Your score from the Winnipeg Arena, the New York Islanders four, the Winnipeg, the Winnipeg Jets one, and we'll return for a recap right after these messages. Alice, this is your big chance. Uh, no, Alice, this is your big chance. And your big chance to find the Toyota you want from Big Stock of 85. Front wheel drive, sporty cars, roomy vans and wagons, and tough trucks. Your Toyota dealer wants to move them now, so make your deal on the Toyota you want. And drive it home. Right, but hurry, don't miss your big chance. See your Toyota dealer now. Techniques brings you one of the most significant advances in sound since stereo. Digital audio. Compact digital discs replace records, and lasers replace needles in Techniques compact disc players to give you the one music experience conventional stereo never could. Reality.
digital audio from Techniques, the science of sound. The Maverick. You've got to get him back. And when you've got him, you head for the mountains. Push. Head for the beer that goes down smooth as a mountain stream. Bush. Brewed the natural way for a taste as smooth as its name. Bush. Head for Bush beer. Head for the mountains. The Golden Nugget is a beautiful place. And you know why? Because these people who work here make it more beautiful. Isn't that right, sweetheart? This my pal Al. My man, Mr. S. Yes, sir. Now, from the minute you check in here, you're going to get a big bunch of smiles like these. Look at this. They call me Blue Eyes. And do not forget the great entertainment. Don't you forget my towels. What does he do here, anyway? Golden Nugget, Atlantic City. Only the best. Your score from the Winnipeg Arena. After two periods, the New York Islanders four, the Winnipeg Jets one. Shots on goal in the second period by Winnipeg 12 for a total of 28. The Islanders with seven shots on goal for a two-period total of 14. The Islanders led one to nothing going to the period, and a goal by Howard Chuck tied it up at 6-14. Howard Chuck's 13th goal of the year with an assist to McLean, and the Islanders battle back. Boudelier from Bourne at 9.05, then Flatley with a second goal of the night, eighth of the year, from Tonelli at 17.37. And with only seven seconds remaining in the period, John Tonelli blasted one off the left point. That caught the goaltender a little surprised on the play, and Tonelli's 12th goal of the year lengthened the lead to 4-1. to one. Assists on that goal to Gord Lane and Brent Sutter. Only two penalties in the period, one to each team, and after two, the Islanders are leading the Jets 4-1. to one. They seem to get into trouble in their own end of the ice a couple of times, Islanders, that is, but overall, the, the passing again good, and those three goals make this uh, game a little different than really the play is uh, indicated. There's no question, Jiggs, that the score does not indicate the way the game has gone to this point. Uh, Winnipeg, clearly, in the second period, had many good opportunities. Billy Smith called upon like he was in the first period to make four or five very good saves, but there was two opportunities that Winnipeg missed on. They were open net situations, and uh, some of the inexperience of the young players on the Winnipeg team, of course, pulling the trigger a little premature and uh, missing the net on both opportunities. That could have changed the score around by quite a bit. They could have been leading by one easily coming in to the third period rather than trailing by three. Now they find themselves in a position where they have to battle back here in the third period, have to open it up a little, perhaps. The Islanders leading by a score of 4-1. to one. Eddie Westfall will be along as our intermission continues right after these messages. There must be a bank out there with the financial services I need and the personal service I want. Welcome to National Westminster Bank USA. I'll show you how to earn bonus yields on CDs. I'll help you lock in a low loan rate. I can help you expand, even start your business. And I promise that at NatWest USA, you'll always receive personal attention. So, from all of us, welcome. Welcome to National Westminster Bank USA. You know, we haven't messed up an engine all day. It was your idea to come here. Yeah, big parking lot, lots of cars. Has the whole world switched to mobile super and let it gasoline? It's so powerful. And it's got high octane. Oh, what do they have against knocking and pinging? Fellas, fellas, let's forget about mobile super unleaded. Why? It's beneath us. <laughs> Last time you changed planes in the Midwest, did it seem a bit like the Wild West? Well, next time, fly into an airport that feels like an airport and not like a stockyard. Fly Eastern to Kansas City. In Kansas City, you can stroll from one Eastern plane to another without being trampled and make connections to Seattle, San Diego, Tucson, Phoenix, or 11 other Western cities. So fly Eastern through Kansas City and break away from the herd. Every weekend, New York Telephone lowers its rates 60%, which makes life in New York a lot more livable. I can't live without you. I can't smile without you. I can't laugh and I can't sing. 60% lower rates on weekends. Now, what could make life in New York more livable than that? New York lives on New York Telephone. 
At the end of two periods, the Islanders lead the Winnipeg Jets 4-1. to one. And as we had promised you at the end of the second period, our guest, Ted Irvin. And Teddy, did you really uh, set up Brian Kilray for his first National Hockey League goal with the uh, Los Angeles Kings? Well, you've been an old winger, Eddie. You know I had to do all the work, and Brian just <laughs> stood in front of the net and put into an empty net. Teddy, you look well, and, uh, and all my spies have filled me in on the fact that you've been uh, with great uh, dedication and hard work become quite successful in the insurance and investment counseling. Have I got that right? That's pretty well it, Eddie. When I quit the game, I went into insurance and then I went on my own the last couple of years and added on investment planning and tax planning and estate planning. So I started my own company this summer, got a couple of young people working for me. So I'm getting there. It's a long way to start from, isn't it? When you think that you've finished a successful career in the National Hockey League, you don't really start out even with everybody, do you? No, as we're talking, Eddie, I felt we were about seven years behind. You know, all of a sudden we're 33, 35 years old, and guys have been in the business world for seven, eight years, uh, you know, head start on us. But uh, hockey does give you a lot of good training. You know, you got nobody to blame but yourself, so you just go out and do your best. Having uh, have, uh, a career that spanned from uh, early days of Boston, Los Angeles, New York and uh, St. Louis, uh, you've had an opportunity to meet a lot of people and play in a lot of cities. And, uh, you know, your career, uh, uh, I remember well, all of the teams I played against you on, but in New York, you seem to be a very popular guy in New York. And you must uh, think uh, well of the years you had with the Rangers. Well, New York was, to me, the epitome of playing in the National Hockey League. As you know, coming from the original six, uh, you guys had such, you know, uh, you know good franchise plus competitive hockey and then when you went into the buildings of the New Yorks, the Boston, Detroit, Chicago, it was really hockey. You didn't have a night off and when I got to New York I found even when we went to California you didn't have a night off. You had to play to the best of your capabilities and we love New York as a city. The fans, they're tough on you but they wanted to, all they want is value for their dollar and I say the six years in the National Hockey League with New York Rangers the happiest time of my whole career. How about now coming to a hockey game, Ted? Uh, you come to the games, uh watch them what uh, what kind of things do you uh, enjoy about the game and is there anything that you're disappointed in well what i enjoy about the kids today you know puck handling is so much better when you and i play i mean like you know we had nicknames like whack whack and everything <laughs> else you know but the kids are smoother today if i guess i would have one disappointment is that they're not there to play every night and it's like they don't pay the price every night either you know some nights are really hot other nights they really don't work as, as hard as they should and if you mention that to them, they get very defensive about it and say, well, I'm going as hard as I can. Yet they'll come out the following night and work really hard and play a super game, and they think that's the way they played the night before. Uh, so that's what I guess I'm disappointed about, is some of the kids have so much ability, but they really don't take advantage of it. How about tonight's game? Let's, uh, let's get some of your uh, Ted Irving eye views of, uh, say, the first two periods of this hockey game tonight. Well, Winnipeg Jets just had a tremendous road trip, winning four out of five, and they've had trouble winning at home to get the fans out here. And tonight, everybody's looking forward to play the Islanders and play a good game, but Billy Smith has just stolen them. And as you said before, the inexperience of some of the Jets' forwards has cost them goals. But the Islanders, I'm very impressed by them. They move the puck a lot better for some reason. I don't know if they've changed their style, whatever it is, but Billy Smith is still amazing. That's what's the difference in the game tonight. You get to... Uh put your talents to use for some of the uh, games around here in the uh, in the Winnipeg area it's an easy game now eh? no body <laughs> checking no slap shots so it's a fun game now we do a lot of charity work with the Manitoba Jet old timers here and uh, get involved with Special Olympics and a lot of other games so we still don the blades and we still play the original six cocktail league isn't it uh, they call it when we get to be our age <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is <laughs> very sociable <laughs> don't rip the sweaters and see you after the game can you give us an idea, or is it confidential, uh, about some of the people that, uh, that you handle in the National Hockey League that you lend your professional services to now? Well, I, I've got a few of the kids on the island. There's a Sutter family itself, uh, you know, fortunate enough to meet them when I was in St. Louis with Brian, so I do work with them and Bernie Federko. I've got two or three of the Jets, and it's taken me five or six years to get the credibility to go out and really understand what these kids are trying to do. And that's clear the shack. Here comes Eddie Shack. Here comes Eddie Shack. Yeah, Come in here. Uh, so it's, you know, I've got about 10 or 12 guys. I don't go after the professional athlete because of the lawyers and that, and I'm not prepared at this time to, to deal with the lawyers. But in your own field, what are, you know, what are some of the things if a young player comes along and says to Ted Irving, uh, look, at, uh, you know, I need some advice on, on uh, some financial counseling. I'm earning a pretty good living now, which most of the players do today. And, and uh, what are the, some of the things that, uh, that you think are important for young players financially? Well, the biggest thing is that is to get to know what the kid is like himself, I find, that what does he want to try to accomplish? Because so many of the players come from different areas of the country, they all have different goals. The biggest thing is I find that, you know, 
the risk taking why take risks why don't you get some guarantees first become a businessman when you get out of the game when you can spend more time at it to believe half the things you hear from people trying to sell you and like i don't see anything wrong all the things i've tried land shelters film shelters same as you have and i wish sometimes i would just left my money in the bank and so to try to plan a game plan is to learn about the kid get you know 90 percent of his money into guarantee then speculate after then to spend some time on it don't turn off his brain by saying i'm going to handle everything for you so the kids that i work with are there in my office all the time our business summer we go through ideas or we introduce them to accountants and lawyers who are good people people are willing to help and to share some ideas what these kids should be looking at and then the biggest thing is to get things paid up by the time you quit the game so you have no debt you can walk out and just make an honest living with no debt one of the observations that I have to maybe trade uh, with you is the fact that I often uh, I often worry about young players. They earn a good living. They uh, they get paid every two weeks, and uh, I always thought it was important for them to receive their paycheck. Take a look at it. See where all of the deductions go. See how much they've got left after taxes, and uh, and then you know handle their own money and then turn it over to somebody. Is uh, do you find that that's a problem with some of the young players handing everything over to an agent? That, that's my biggest complaint. Is and I don't say that lawyers or agents do a bad job. Is but why turn off your your brain just because you're an athlete I mean you can cash your check and because it's gonna be important to when you get out of the game and I and I do find some fellows in the summertime saying gee I'm a little short of cash well where is it? well it's locked up in this and locked up in that and so what is it locked up in? I don't know and so, yeah I, I agree with what you're saying and because there are enough people around that you know help you handle your check learn what it costs to buy a house and the biggest problem I find also is guys make 200,000 they live to 250. <laughs> Teddy it's good to see you you're looking well and uh, thank you for the visit and across the country that really are going to get to see her. Glad to know that you're doing well. Thank you. Well, Eddie, I appreciate New York fans. are the greatest. Teddy Irvin. Now let's go back over to Jiggs McDonald. All right, Eddie, tonight's guest receives the original Members Only Strap Collar Jacket. It's today's most exciting, most wanted jacket, Members Only, the brand that's... Jets 4 to 1 will return to the Winnipeg Arena right after these messages. Who says you can't have it all? Who says you can't love your work and leave it to? Who says you can't taste it all? Michelob Light. Super premium taste in a less filling beer. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Have it all. Looks like you're into winning. You bet. Then today, Chevrolet has a car for you. Cavalier. Come on in and go up. Turn it on. Let it go inside your command. Two liters of electronically fuel-injected power. Front drive agility and optional sports suspension. Cavalier. Grab one. If this is today's Chevrolet, it's a winner. Drive today's Chevy. Live today's Chevy. Live it. Chevy. Hunters on an African safari search for an elephant burial ground and for ivory. Enough ivory to supply the world. There's a million pounds for the man who finds it. But some men would rather find love than money. Romance as well as danger is in the air. The safari is treading on sacred land. Only Tarzan can save them. Johnny Weissmuller is Tarzan the Ape Man, and Maureen O'Sullivan is Jane, Saturday at 1. Yeah, I'll let anybody in here nowadays. Hey, hey, you cool it, boy. I just want you to know, JR, I'm gonna nail you. You gotta be a man to play in my league. What if Barnes has initiated a custody suit? He's gotta be out of his mind. He's asking for blood tests to prove paternity. You've gotta do something. Well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I am gonna get the quickest divorce in the history of the state of Texas. And you, my dear, can walk the streets before I'll give you a dime. What will happen to Sue Ellen? Find out on Dallas, Monday night at 7. Two periods, the Islanders are leading 4-1, to one, and here's what's happened to the game. Pat Flatley scored the only goal in the first period, his seventh of the year, assisted by John Tonelli and Brent Sutter at 8.53. In the second period, Dale Howarchuk tied it for Winnipeg at 6.14 on an assist to McLean. Paul Boudelier got the Islanders back in front. Paul Boudelier is eighth of the year from Bob Bourne at 9.05. And then Pat Flatley's second goal of the night, eighth of the year from John Tonelli at 17.37, made it 3-1. to one. With seven seconds left in the second period, John Tonelli from Gord Lane and Brent Sutter, the Islanders went to the dressing room, leading Winnipeg 
four to one. They've been outshot two to one on the night. Winnipeg with 28 shots, the Islanders with 14. The New York Islanders lead it by three goals. I want you to take a look at this. Here's the cover of the 1984-85 New York Islanders yearbook. It's available now. This year's edition, along with a full-color photo of your favorite Islander, also has a special 12-page supplement commemorating the Islanders' 12 years in the National Hockey League. You'll find a feature on Mike Bossy, another on Al Arbor, and the younger players on the squad, and a recap of what happened in the 84 playoffs. Here's how you go about getting your copy of this year's yearbook. Send a check or money order for $6, and that includes postage and handling. Send it to Islanders Yearbook, Sports Programs Incorporated. There's the address, 4100 Palisade Avenue, Union City, New Jersey, 07087. New York Islanders on WOR TV Sports. Coming up, the Islanders to meet the Vancouver Canucks December the 3rd, Monday, December the 3rd at 10.30. Then on Wednesday, December the 5th, the Edmonton Oilers at 9.30 p.m. You know what frightens me about the, the next leg of the road trip is the fact that the Vancouver Canucks were one of 12 to one in Los Angeles last night. They stay over to play again Saturday night. If they should be humiliated again to that degree, they'll, they'll have burrs in their saddles when they get back home on Monday against the New York Islanders. That's always troublesome because you have a tendency for a team coming in to take the home team lightly after they've received one of those drubbings. And if the Canucks have any pride at all, you know they're going to be fired up. No question about it. Pride, no matter how bad you get defeated, swells mm. at some time or another. And as a team coming in to, to, to play against a team that has been drubbed a couple of times, more than once lately, there's always that element. That'll be our next game for you Monday night, 10.30 Eastern time. Here's Carlisle shooting the puck into the Islanders zone as the third period is underway. Longevin unable to slap it out of there. Steen and Smale collide, and Gilbert comes up with the puck. Now to Brian Trache, but out of his reach. It's going wide of Brian Hayward in the Winnipeg goal, and the Islanders called for icing. In the meantime, Gilbert and Steen talking things over on a heated discussion between the two of them. Did you see the threatening the gesture, Jake Steen? He rides the stick under the chin of Greg Gilbert. That's the kind of stuff that we've talked about several times where the sticks get just a little bit too high. Bob Bourne is now going to let Greg Gilbert cool down a little bit, showing good judgment. Didn't go after him. He probably thought about it. He said... But then he does not want to put his team in jeopardy. On the blue line, Picard's shot is kicked out by Smith. Failed the rebound, hit the side of the net. Another shot, Smith the save off Lundholm. The Jets center it again. Cleared wide by Steen. Smith went back in the net to get it to Bourne, but he couldn't clear it out. Steen shot, bounced off Trotche. Steen captures it again, but lost it to Trotche, who's given it to Bossy on right wing. Trying to get around Carlisle. He does at the Winnipeg line. Mike Bossy goes to the boards and check there, and out comes Lundholm. Bent Lundholm at center. Into the Islander zone, a pass to Steen, and the shot is off the blocking glove of Smith. Lundholm lost his balance, and Bossy played it out to center ice. Gilbert is back on the ice, along with LaFontaine, but the Jets dump it in offside at the Islander blue line. The Jets want to get back into this hockey game, Jiggs. They're going to have to skate like they did in the second period, but they're going to have to do it for the whole 20 minutes. Islanders, a team that when they take leads into the third period, do not give them up easy. They're going to have to get some opportunities. They're going to have to make some opportunities for themselves and take advantage. They didn't do that. They made the opportunities in the second period, but they didn't take advantage. They didn't finish. We're about a minute and 10 seconds into the third period. Ersan has given the puck to LaFontaine, and he dumps it in off Bellet's stick. Gilly's chasing it. Gives it to Dwayne Sutter. Put it out in front. LaFontaine knocked off the puck, and then Hayward covers up. Mullen checking LaFontaine as the puck was right in the goal mount. Clark Gillies, look at the play behind him. Beautiful pass. Dwayne Sutter and Pat LaFontaine. He'd have loved to have been about another seven feet further out in front of the net. Look at him as he gets a little mad at himself. That's a good sign. Knowing that he was in so close, he had no time at all to see the puck get his stick on it and make a play at the net. 
Yeah, time and space. Everybody needs a little space. Isn't that what they... You've got to get oh. room to maneuver, huh? Well, not always, but, you know, he was being checked fairly closely. When you get in that close, coaches will always say, just stay out a little further because it's easier to come into the net from further out than try and back up when the puck is coming to you and get a shot away. You can't do it. Fontaine gets checked by Ellett. Gillies with the puck now, and Howard Chuck knocked it away from him. Comes to the point. Thomas Johnson shot blocked by Waters. He gave it to Mullen. Out to center to McLean, but LaFontaine stepped in front of him, and Bill Smith steers it aside for Thomas Johnson. Johnson up the right wing, out of the reach of Brent Sutter. Ellett gets into the Islander zone. It was checked there, and out at center, it's Waters. Fans reacting. The Islander player who had gone for Ellett missed and ran into the boards rather heavily. Here is Johnson. Gave it to Tonelli as he flew down left wing. Tonelli stops in front of Babbage, gives it to Brent Sutter. Sutter unable to go back to the net. Flatley digs it loose. Fed it to Gord Lane. Lane shot into the pads of goaltender Hayward, and play is called. A break in the action. Still 17 and a half minutes to play in the game. Lead the Jets 4-1. Germany, Britain, Japan, Sweden, France, Italy. You have questioned America's ability to create a high-performance luxury automobile. Here's America's answer. The 1985 98 Oldsmobile. 98? Front-wheel drive. Multi-port fuel-injected engine. Four-wheel independent suspension. The 1985 98. Now, that's America's answer. Face off to the right of Hayward. Brent Sutter and Boschman on the draw, and the Islanders get control of it. Tonelli shoots Hayward the save. Flatley with the rebound, but he couldn't get it on the stick. And Turnbull dumps it to center ice and went off Flatley. Picked up by Arneal, and Boudelier knocks him down. That Flatley to Brent Sutter. Tight runs into him. The puck goes to Turnbull. Harry Turnbull unable to handle it. It's loose for Flatley. Pat Flatley, a Toronto native who attended the University of Wisconsin, laid it in off Tonelli. Out of the net went Hayward. Lost it to Flatley, who was cruising in on right wing. Flatley trying to sidestep Kite's check. Uh, Boschman comes out for Winnipeg. Laurie Boschman cutting to the left. Fired it wide of Bill Smith. Babbage chasing it. Put it right on the stick of Lane. The pass to Flatley off his stick at center ice, and it's recovered by Jim Kite. Kite over center ice. Gave it to Turnbull. The Islander line comes in on the left side. Did it chases him to the corner. Turnbull backhand shot is steered aside by Smith. Picked up by Lane. And Gord Lane has iced it. So we're going to whistle as Picard goes back on the Winnipeg defense. 16-17 remaining in the third period. 32-15. to 15. Somebody walked into this hockey game now, looked at the shots on net. They'd wonder what the heck is going on as soon as they looked up at the scoreboard. The Islanders four. Winnipeg won. Billy Smith, as usual, had some pretty testy shots, but he made them all look fairly easy. Two that stand out. A couple of shots by Winnipeg forwards that missed open nets. Yeah, they've had that problem tonight. Shot from the blue line by Picard skips wide. Our Chuck trying to set up the play, and the pass out of the corner by Lukowicz didn't materialize. Now comes back to Carlisle, and Smith makes the save and covers up on it. Good stop again by Billy Smith. Carlisle, he can shoot the puck well. Take a look. There's the play back by Arneal. There's the shot by Randy Carlisle. Look at the left foot go out with the pad. Look at the balance of Billy Smith. Makes the save, and of course, more important, or just as important, is that he covers up on the rebound, although he had lots of help waiting around in front of him and his two defensemen in the center iceman. Bob Bourne on the faceoff with Howard Chuck. The Jets get control of it. Carlisle with another shot. Smith got a piece of that. Lukowicz back in the net. Looks for somebody in front. Smith knocked it away from him, and the Islanders have cleared it. Icing waved off as Hayward moves out of the net. Got it off for Picard. Robert Picard. Stick handles into center ice. Overled Howard Chuck, who was on right wing, and Longevin. Tried to move it up the boards. Here's Howard Chuck taking Lukowicz's pass and shooting it off the stick and into the seats back of the Islander goal. One, one of the other, Mets, excuse me, Jake, go ahead. 
I'm just going to say one other game in the league that's been completed. Toronto Maple Leafs and New York Rangers in a 3-3 overtime tie tonight. The Leafs trailed 3-1 in that game, Eddie, and came back to get the tie at Madison Square Garden. That's a good tie for Toronto. They've been having a lot of problems. We were watching number 12 go back to the bench. Morris Lukowicz from Spears, Saskatchewan. Where is that? In Saskatchewan, next province over. Oh, you know, just about 25 miles from Moose Jaw. Just over the hill. <laughs> Are there any hills between here and None. Moose Jaw? Oh, nope. not even a sand dune, not even. <laughs> but it is pretty country. Trache with the puck. Checked at the Winnipeg line. Here's Hun Lundholm. He gets over the line, trying to cut in around. Pearson has turned around, and Steen picks it up. Back to Waters. Let's it go, and it changed direction. Off the skates of Gilbert. Now a shot off the pads of Smith as Ellis moved in, and Gilbert getting up slowly. He took the full force of that shot off the skate and can't stand. He had a problem earlier with an ankle that he turned during the offseason and then blocked a Doug Wilson shot in the Islander home opener this year, and the ankle has bothered him. He was sent. tied up in front of the net with Snail. It's his left ankle, Jiggs, and limping quite heavily. Let's take a look. There's Gilbert, 17, in front of the net. Watch his feet now. We'll see if we can fill. Oh, that's a shot that went off. Look at him. That shot coming in from the point from Waters. Tim Waters hit him on the left ankle. Of course, that always makes the coach feel better, the trainer feel better, his teammates feel better, but not him. They know that if it was a shot, there's less chance of severe damage than if he had twisted it. Now Waters going back on the Winnipeg defense. The Jets will regroup. Ellett plays it over to Waters. Dave Ellett has been impressive tonight. He's got a good shot and good sense of the game defensively. Waters backing up into the Winnipeg zone. He and Ellett together on defense, and Waters trying to clear it out, shot it into the crowd instead. We'll take a break here with 14 and a half minutes remaining in regulation time. The Islanders lead the Winnipeg Jets 4-1. Who says you can't have it all? Who says you can't have pinstripes and rock and roll? Michelob Light. Super premium taste in a less filling beer. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Have it all. Getting ready for a face-off in the Winnipeg end of the ice. LaFontaine, Gillies, and Dwayne Sutter, the Islander forwards. Boudelier and Lane together on defense. Boschman will take the draw. Laurie Boschman pulled it away from LaFontaine. Kite in the corner. Trying to get away from Dwayne Sutter. Now LaFontaine steps into Turnbull. Kick the puck to Dwayne Sutter. Out in front to Gillies, and he was covered by Boschman. Puck rolls down into the Islander end. Gord Lane goes back. Lucien Deblois was the player that Winnipeg traded to Montreal for Perry Turnbull. In case you're wondering, and then the Jets ended up sending Doug Sotart to Montreal as the season was ready to get underway. Former Ranger goaltender. This is Boschman on left wing for the Jets. Comes to the Islander line. Turnbull in ahead of the play, and Winnipeg is called in the offside. Close checking here. Winnipeg trying to break something loose, but the Islanders can do it so well. They can bog a team right down. They can tie up their skate laces in the third period, sitting on a 4-1 to one lead. You remember who was the gentleman that coached the Jets in their initial season in the National Hockey League? He's now coaching in the American Hockey League, by the way. The initial coach for the Winnipeg Jets yeah. in the National Hockey League. I haven't thought about that lately. Tom McVee. Oh, yes, Tommy. Tommy McVee. Here's a chance for Mullen, and he overskated the puck in the Islander zone. Langevin, checked by McLean, recovered in time to give it to Goring, then to Diddick. Diddick to Helene. Off Goring stick at center ice. It goes back to McLean. Oh, McLean shoots it into the corner. Carlisle in off the blue line to pick it up. Drops it back to Howard Chuck coming in on goal. A backhander is blocked. Smith makes a dazzling save off Mullen, who turns, and that was blocked. 
Here's McLean handling it, and it's intercepted by Mike Bossy. Fades it up right wing, out of the reach of Goring. Picard had all kinds of trouble handling the puck, and Hayward comes out of the net to help. Gave it to Carlisle, across to McLean. Off his skates to Howard Chuck, but it's also offside, and will result in a faceoff in the Winnipeg end of the ice. All the Winnipeg Jets shaking their head, arguing. Howard Chuck is upset because he didn't think he was offside. It went off the skate of Arneal. That's what they're arguing about just before the blue line. Carlisle saying the same thing, and they're right. Let's take a look. There goes Howard Chuck. There's the puck. You see the player right at the center ice area? It went off his skate. It went off Arneal's on its route, on en route to Howard Chuck. So that, of course, nullified the offside. They're right. So the officials are, are admitting they've made a mistake. A good opportunity here, which... Now, this is one of the rarities in hockey when the officials any sport I guess when the officials make a mistake see where they face off right at the center ice dot Forsey made the mistake Swede Knox the other linesman of course standing there watching it could see that it was a mistake and he's corrected it so the face off goes at center ice but that doesn't bring back the fact that Winnipeg was on a two on one break no it does not but at least it's public Awareness, I guess, uh, humiliation, well, whatever you want to call well, it. Well, it's just admitting to the mistake. Yeah. As we talked about that one night before, about officials, and do they ever admit to the fact they make mistakes? Brent Sutter deflected Janssen's shot from the blue line, and Hayward able to make the save. Well, the only other time you'll see a face-off at center ice is after a goal or at the beginning of a period, unless one of the officials has erred and so admits. And that's what happened here. Winnipeg making some changes. We mentioned Tom McVie being the initial coach. He was replaced by Bill Sutherland, who finished up uh, next year. Then Mike Smith, or Michael Smith, and then Tom Watt. And just over a year ago, Tom Watt was relieved of his duties here in Winnipeg and replaced by Barry Long. I think it was the 22nd of November, 83, if I recall correctly. Barry Long finished up last season with a 500 record, and then... Winnipeg lost out to Edmonton in the opening round of the playoffs. Of course, everybody lost out to Edmonton last year, didn't they? <laughs> that covers all the bases. Lately having trouble with the puck in front of the net. Smith the save. The puck is loose again. And underneath Bill Smith. A penalty call coming up against the Islanders. A holding call. Sets up a Winnipeg power play. Winnipeg have had enough opportunities at open nets in this hockey game to win it going away. Let's take a look. There's Babbage as he comes across the line. Wrestling with Thomas Johnson. There's the puck in front of the net. A loose puck. Billy Smith couldn't get a hold of it. There's Babbage. He tried to kick it in. He said, if I can't get it in with my stick, I'll kick it in. Look at the flurry around the net as Winnipeg, knowing Billy Smith is down on the ice, try to lift it over him, but they're unsuccessful. Thomas Johnson draws a holding penalty and a must situation for Winnipeg on a power play here. 12-14 remaining in the third period. They have to score here. They trail by three. Dale Howardchuk has come out on the power play along with Steen and Turnbull. Boschman and Babbage there as well. Howardchuk backs up to play the right point. Babbage on the left side. And Trache knocked it away from Boschman, but the Islanders couldn't get it out on the initial attempt. Here's Lane. Around the boards. Over comes Bourne. He's checked by Babbage. Boudelier tries the opposite direction. The open wing in this case. Howard Chuck loses it to Trotche, and he backhands it down the ice. Hayward plays it around the boards for Babbage. David Babbage. Long pass to Howard Chuck. Shoots it into the Islanders' zone. Steen goes in after it. It's checked by Paul Boudelier. Boschman steals it. Sorry, Boschman back of the net. Couldn't find anybody open in front. Steen picks it up. To the point for Babbage. Let's the shot go. He scores! Smith yelling at Fournier that uh, was off the hand of the Winnipeg player, Turnbull. Billy Smith is incensed, Jades. I, it's from our altitude here. We can't tell the puck how high off the ice it was. Here we get a beautiful view of it. There's Babbage's shot. Oh, no, it went right over the shoulder. Billy Smith's arguing that it hit a stick. I didn't see it hit anything. It just went right over everybody's shoulder. There's the shot. Turnbull ducks. It didn't hit anything. It didn't hit anything, and it went right over the shoulder of Billy Smith into the net. Smith was ducking, trying to find out where the puck was as it went over the shoulder of number 27, Turnbull. 
It went into the net just underneath the crossbar. It had not touched anything. That's a good play by Smith, though. He's trying to get the goal nullified any way he can. He stopped just about everything that Winnipeg have thrown at him. Power play goal for the Jets. Babbage with his third goal of the year, and it makes it 4-2 to two now. Here's Clark Gillies to LaFontaine. His shot was deflected. Picked up by Carlisle. Randy Carlisle gave it to Howard Chuck. Fired it out to center ice, but right to Dwayne Sutter, and he dumps it in off the glass. Hayward wraps it around to the left wing. Mullen clears it outside the line, where Boudelier knocked it down and shot it back in. A delayed offside, not called. Mullen ices the puck, however, and that will be called. 10.52 left in the third period. A break in the action. It's the Islanders four, the Jets two. Riley, this is your big chance. No, Riley, this is your big chance. And your big chance to find the Toyota you want right now. For the biggest inventory of 85 cars and trucks this year, your Toyota dealer wants to move them out fast. <laughs> A hurry before someone else drives the Toyota you want right out the door. I couldn't pass. Couldn't pass up great Toyota value. They're moving fast. Don't miss your big chance. See your Toyota dealer now. Dinnick controlling the puck at the blue line. Gave it to Longevin and his pass to Bossy was tipped. Fired off the right point by Dinnick and Hayward got a piece of that. The Jets able to clear it to center ice. Longevin went back, gave it to Greg Gilbert. Gilbert, who had limped off earlier, back out there playing with Trotche and Bossy. Here's Lundholm for Winnipeg. Sends Spale over the line. Steen trailing. Spale cuts in. Shoots. Fifth went down to block it. And it's cleared to the point. Held in momentarily. Now Gilbert gets it outside the blue line. Ellett covering up at the Winnipeg line. Overled Spale with the pass. Brought back by Greg Gilbert. Gilbert to the Winnipeg line. Trying to step in around Ellett. Goes to the backhand. The pass to Bossy failed to materialize. Waters starts out for Winnipeg. Waters plays it off Lundholm at the blue line. Smith out of the net, went to clear it. He got the stick up a little bit, and Spale not too happy with that. Neither of these fans at the Winnipeg Arena. Spale centers the puck again on the doorstep and grabbed, held now by Smith with 9.49 left in the third period. They love to boo him, Billy Smith. The move he makes, of course, draws a lot of attention from the opposition and the fans. Smith going out to clear the puck, waves at the puck, and he has a great follow-through. He looked like Sam Sneed a lot of times as he follows through with his stick. He brings it well up over the heads of the on-rushing opposition players. Almost a threatening gesture. He has made contact at times. On occasion, yes. Fred Sutter and Boschman on this face-off. Arneal with a drive. Smith got his right pad, making his left pad, actually, in front of that shot. And the puck went out to center ice. Babby shoots it back in again. Ersan chasing it around the boards for John Tonelli. Couldn't clear it out. Randy Carlisle shoots one. Smith put the pad in front of that drive. Brent Sutter for the Islanders. Backhands it into center ice where Babbage knocked it down. The Jets have had 42 shots on goal to this point. We're just a little more than midway through the third period. The Islanders lead 4-2. to two. Arneal, the Boschman. Corey Boschman shot it through the goal mouth. It comes back to Carlisle, and he... Lost it. Flatley unable to pick it up. Here's Turnbull. He's checked as he ran into Pearson, and the puck is underneath the Islander defenseman. In the meantime, Billy Smith has company in the goal crease. There's a gathering. It's a happening. Come into my web. <laughs> Said the spider to the fly. <laughs> Bill Webb didn't think that was the... <laughs> Uh, he's lost his sense of humor after yeah. the money he paid. Well, today. Listen, you know what we should do? We should really thank all the folks that have stayed up this late to watch a uh, pretty good hockey game between the Islanders and the Winnipeg Jets. Here's the replay. Turnbull. He'll lose the puck here. Turn around and bang. Ooh. Stefan Pearson. Look in front of Billy Smith. Smith reaches out with the left hand, tugs away at the stick as the Winnipeg Jets player, Arneal, falls in over top of Billy Smith. Saw Laurie Boschman back at the bench, and there is Dale Howardchuk, who's come out now. Howardchuk, McLean, and Lukowicz for Winnipeg against Bourne, Goring, and Helene for the Islanders. The Islanders playing without Denny Popvan. Anders Kaller not dressed tonight, and of course, Nystrom and Morrow out with injuries. 
This is Helene. Down the right side, Matt Saline to the Winnipeg line. Nice move to get around Ellis. Helene's backhander off the goal post under Hayward, and he has been able to smother the puck. Good. What a move by Helene, Eddie. Beautiful move, Jags. He made a few of them the other night against Calgary, and here tonight, look at the move here. Beautiful shift. Watch the backhand off the goal post on the far side. It came right out underneath Brian Hayward, the goaltender. A good move as... Matt Saline walks outside, twists and turns number two, Dave Ellett, and then puts the puck off the goalpost. There's Butch Goring on the far side trying to smack it in. Hayward gets down on the ice, gets a hold of the puck, and hangs on. Those 43 long, shots to 17. Those long arms enabling Helene to put the puck out there and that, give himself some room. That's worth a half a step, Jiggs, just the length of his arms because... He puts the puck in close, this time to Ellett, and then pulled it back and walked around him with a great move. Reminded me a little bit of Frank Mahovlich. Mahovlich used to do that a great deal. Yes, he did. Here's Helene with the puck again. Sends Goring in. He shoots off the post to the right of the net. Goring taps it out in front. It's picked up by Lukowicz. Morris Lukowicz with center. The pass to McLean. Gets over the line. Boudelier takes him off the puck. McLean recovers. Centers. There's Waters on the right side. Let's it go. Smith down. Makes the save and holds on. And again, they converge in front of the net. This time, Howard Chuck and Helene with the sticks up. Waters came in late for Winnipeg, and everybody is gathered around. Billy Smith is refereeing as they converge in front of him. He's looking at the referee saying, get those point men of the... Jets out there at the blue line. Well, there's a break in the action here at the Winnipeg Arena. The Islanders 4, Winnipeg 2 will return in a moment. Panasonic introduces a new lightweight video system that's so automatic, it works by itself. The camera focuses by itself. It even records in low light all by itself. This Panasonic VHS recorder connects almost by itself and plays back with special effects. This Panasonic through your stereo creates hi-fi sound that stands out by itself. Panasonic, just slightly ahead of our time. an APB when you're looking for somebody all person bulletin all points all points bulletin yeah you've seen Doug Gould on this road trip the crack reporter of the New York Post as a matter of fact he's obvious by his absence wasn't he supposed to be here I would think so the Islanders are on the road he is missing maybe we should record it Steen with a drive Smith the save 45 a, shots now for Winnipeg. What a stop by Billy Smith on that one. He didn't see that till the last second. At LaFontaine trying to get it out of his own zone with help from Dwayne Sutter. He succeeded. Carlisle lost the puck. LaFontaine to Dwayne Sutter. He's across the line with a drive. Missed on the stick hand side. Mark Gillies in after it. Lundholm with it on the right wing boards. LaFontaine battling. It comes to center ice where Spale was checked. Seven and a half minutes left in the third period. Here's Gerald Dittick. The Jets now have the record for the most shots in the game against the Islanders this year. Prior to tonight, the Rangers with the Los Angeles, I should say, with 44 and held the lead. This is Greg Gilbert trying to work from back of the net. He gets tangled up with Picard and held. And now Carlisle moves it around the boards. Pearson it come in from the blue line. Knocked it away from Carlisle. Greg Gilbert trying to go back to the net. Couldn't center it. Ian Carlisle grabbing a hold of one another. Trache comes in, is checked by Arneal. Trache ends up on the ice, and the puck comes around to the left side for Boschman. Takes a hit from Pearson and dumps it down the boards. Islanders four, Jets two. Less than seven minutes remaining in the third period. Here's Perry Turnbull with it. He's across the line. Turnbull checked by Janssen, and Trache comes up with the puck. Ryan Trotche over center ice. Gives it to Bossy. Back to Trotche. Comes into the backhand of the forehand, and Hayward robbed him. Bossy goes for the loose puck. Turns, fires it toward the net. It's grabbed by Hayward, and he'll hold on for a faceoff. Winnipeg gambling a little, Jake. That's what they have to do. They're going to take some chances, and of course, the Islanders are going to try and capitalize. Bossy with a good pass to Brian Trotche. Trotche going for the top left hand corner. Good stop by Hayward. Trotche goes into the end boards heavily, taken out of the play. Let's take another look at it. There's Brian Trotche, the intensity as he rolls in on the net. 
Boschman took Trotche out after he had made the play. Impressed with Randy Carlisle in this hockey game, Jigs. I'd like to make a point saying that because some nights I'm not impressed by the what I know the ability he has, and he doesn't give it all. He's worked hard tonight. He's played a great game for Winnipeg. Positionally, had some good shots on net. Well, you were never a paid-up member of his booster club, were well, you? Well, I... Now, that's not true. I, you know, I have to just talk about the way he's playing on a particular night. And I think it's what probably a little disappointing when you see somebody of his ability and not giving it all. But he is doing it all tonight. He has played well. Mullen tipped the puck into the Islander zone. Smith left it for Lane. Up the boards. Howard Chuck kicking at it. It goes to Tonelli, however. John Tonelli works his way across the Winnipeg line, trying to get around Picard. Center. There's Flatley to Brent Sutter. Better shot blocked by Hayward with his way out of the net. And it goes to Mullen. Ryan Mullen, lead pass to McLean. He was checked. Pat Flatley with it. Dumps it into the Winnipeg end. Carlisle the first to touch it. We get an icing call against the Islanders. Down to five minutes, 24 seconds remaining in the third period. A break in the action. It's the Islanders four. The Winnipeg Jets two. LaSalle Seiko. Superb design. Responding to the challenge of the highest quartz technology. LaSalle Seiko. Thinness, at times almost two-dimensional. Form that reaches for perfection. And now LaSalle Seiko Gold in the preeminent 14-karat timepiece of this decade. LaSalle Seiko, among the world's great possessions. Available at A&S. Winnipeg, Laurie Boschman comes in to take the face off. Bob Warren is there for the New York Islanders. And I remind you, these two teams at the Nassau Coliseum on Tuesday, December 18th, and again on Thursday, February 21st. Winnipeg gets the draw. There's Carlisle feeding it to the right side. Picard's shot is kicked out by Bill Smith. That's Helene takes a hit as he dumps the puck into center, and Carlisle chases it. Randy Carlisle. The Turnbull, stolen by Helene, gets around Carlisle on this right side, then is checked by Turnbull. Helene one-hands it to the side of the net, and Hayward freezes it there, getting a face-off in the Winnipeg zone. The shots are 47 for the Jets, 18 for the Islanders. There's that number again. You ever play that in the lottery? Qual quality, not quantity, I suppose, is the only fitting thing I could say at this point, Jiggs. Billy Smith has been and tested and retested and he stood his ground of course the important thing for billy what he wants to do is bring his goals against average down and anytime he can keep it around two or below he's going to do that now two would be a significant number the way goals are being scored in the nhl these days smith cuts the puck off back of the net gave it to pearson up the wing there's picard backhand shot hit thomas johnson LaFontaine gave it to Gillies. Now across to Dwayne Sutter on right wing. Sutter had his pass intercepted as he tried to put it on Gillies' stick. And here's Scott Arneal. Shoots it in wide of the net. Bill Smith leaves it for Thomas Johnson. Johnson unable to clear it off the board. Boschman fires it high and wide. Smith grabbed it and just held it there. Allowing Arneal to skate into him and get the play stopping. Well, that's a smart play by Billy Smith. Probably goes unnoticed by a lot of people, Jake. But he could have easily let that bounce off the backboards and go into the other corner. But he knew that if he did that, Winnipeg had just as good a chance of coming up with the puck as the Islanders. So he grabs it, hangs on. The other thing it does, it allows Brian Kilray, the coach for the Islanders tonight, to make a change if he so desires. Ryan Trache and Dale Howarchuk on the faceoff. Howarchuk directing Babbage in a little deeper on the right side. Ellett is actually the lone defenseman. They've got everybody inside the Islander blue line for this draw. And they do get the puck back to Ellett. Back in the net now to McLean. Looks for somebody in front. They had all three men back in the goal line. Nobody to give it to. Now it's picked up by McLean and he lost it. Bob Bourne feeds it out to Bossy. Coming down right wing across the line. Bossy with a drive off the post. Picked up by Gord Lane. Lane shot is deflected on target. And Hayward comes out to clear it. Babbage back of the goal. Takes a look. Moves it up right wing for Howarchuk. It was a dangerous play, but he was able to get away with it. Howarchuk in the backhand. Lost it in the skates of Lane. It comes back to Babbage. A drive. Smith this glove save. And he'll hold on to it with three minutes and 49 seconds left in the third period. 
Your score with this break in the action, the Islanders four, the Jets two. Who says you can't have it all? Who says you can't love your work and leave it to Michelob Light, super premium taste in a less filling beer. Michelob Light, oh yes you can, have it all. Were we talking about how low scores were starting to become more prevalent in the National Hockey League, only to have the next night a 12 to 1 or something come busting through? We should never talk about anything. Oh, we could boy. be the kiss of death, can't we? I wish I could make that work for me. <laughs> Yeah, L.A. comes up with a 12-1 win. I think they were ahead, what, 8 to nothing at one time last night? And those two teams meet again tomorrow night in Los Angeles. Another kind of strange piece of scheduling has the Edmonton Oilers idle from tonight until next Wednesday when they host the New York Islanders. Edmonton winning tonight in Hartford. Just watched as Babby shot the puck high and wide of the Islander net. Edmonton over the Whalers 4 to 2, and they don't play again until Wednesday at home. Oh, well. Ellis with the puck, backhanded it to the Islander line where Diddick knocked it down. Gerald Diddick sends Tonelli into the Winnipeg zone. He gets around Turnbull. John Tonelli centers back to the blue line. There's Flatley. Winds up, shoots. Hayward the save. Turnbull checked by Tonelli. Across to Brent Sutter, comes right in, shoots, he scores! Brent Sutter, pretty well puts this one away for the Islanders, making it 5-2. to two. Opening up is one thing, being absolutely careless is another. Look at the hustle of John Tonelli. He goes over, takes it away from Turnbull. Turnbull should be upset with himself, and he was. There's the pass to Sutter. He makes it look easy as he slides it into the lower right-hand corner. Look at John Tonelli. Just pushed Turnbull off the puck and falling. He gave it to Brent Sutter, and his perfect shot in the lower right-hand corner has given the Islanders a 5-2 to two lead, and most of the folks here in the Winnipeg Arena a good reason for heading for their cars. The Islanders up 5-2. to two. Tonelli with a goal and three assists here tonight. Brent Sutter with a goal and two assists. A hot line for the Islanders once more. It's not to say that they hadn't been. But they have done most of the damage tonight. We watch Goring at center. Shoots it in wide of Hayward. Hayward on the verge of losing to the Islanders for the first time in three games for the Winnipeg Jets. Carlisle backing into his own zone. Plays it out across the line to Boschman. Shot it into the Islander territory wide of Smith. He came out to play it to Matt Saline on left wing. He and Goring come up together. Saline dumps it to the corner. Carlisle slaps it off the boards for Morris Lukowicz. Lukowicz gets his own pass and gives it to Arneal. He lets it go. Smith makes that save, and there's Gord Lane. Winnipeg bound and determined to get the shot clock up to a half a hundred if they can. Steen out of Wellett. They need only one more to reach that. But they go offside on this play with a minute 48 left in this announcement. Jonathan's jet set life is plunged into darkness when an emotionally disturbed man prepares revenge. Don't miss Heart to Heart, Monday at 6, here on Channel 9. You get the feeling we've been traveling with one of those both emotionally... <laughs> yes, emotionally disturbed man <laughs> prepares revenge. I wonder what happened to him that he'd want to get revenge. We'll have know. to tune in. I don't even know what happened to the one we've been traveling with. I by the name of Webb who produces these games. <laughs> Spent a small fortune on dolls. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand it. <laughs> Did it to Gillies? He's uh, across I, the line with a shot wish, that goes up into the. I seat. wish I could. I wish I could produce or manufacture something that he'd like to buy. <laughs> wow. Hey, boy, he's the ultimate consumer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He not, he, listen, he, he, he had so much fun buying the first one, he had to go back and buy two more. Oh, that was... Well, you didn't see the best part of it. He even found wristwatches for them. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Birthday cards, eh? silver spoons and all. Oh, it was incredible. Fun to watch. We just got started on this road trip, too. 
Yes, that's true. Here's he McLean. Enough room in his luggage. <laughs> McLean is over the line, trying to get around. Longevin does, shoots, and it went wide. Wayne Sutter on this right side, couldn't get the puck to Fontaine. And Carlisle comes back with a pass out of the reach of Howard Chuck. He picks it up now, comes over the line, working on Longevin. Right up between his feet, but ended up with no skating room. Longevin to LaFontaine. Spots Gilbert with him on the left side. Gilbert takes the pass back to LaFontaine, and he couldn't tip it by Hayward. Randy Carlisle gives it to McLean, then to Picard. 43 seconds left as he comes into the Islanders' zone. Backhand shot off the pads of Bill Smith. Chache trying to clear it out, couldn't. Howard Chuck plays it out in front of the net, and the Islanders took the man. The puck picked up now by Gilbert to Janssen. Janssen steps into the Winnipeg end, but offside is called with 25 ticks of the clock left. You know, one real area that's never been explained on this trip is why he didn't bring the heavy coat. It's wintertime up here. And he buy another one. <laughs> Obviously. Well, sweaters anyway. 49 shots for the Jets, 22 for the Islanders. And the Islanders will pick up their first win of this four-game road trip 25 seconds from now. Playing gotta, time, that is. That'll be disheartening uh, for the Winnipeg Jets and the fans, Jakes, when you think of, well, the, the shots have to tell you something, that they did have enough territorial advantage. On that note alone, they had possession of the puck probably a little more than the Islanders. They just didn't do enough with it. Flatley back for the puck in his own zone. Plays it back of the net. One of the ongoing things throughout the game has been Anders Kaller trying to figure out how to set his new watch. He's been in the booth next door to us with all kinds of headaches, trying to get that thing working. Oh, Three seconds mean remaining. It, it, it does? Oh, yeah, <laughs> this one did. And there's the horn. Bill Smith gets the high five from his teammates as the Islanders defeat the Winnipeg Jets 5-2. to two. And a pull to 500 on this road trip. And just one other quick note on that, Mark. This was their 199th victory on the road since joining the National Hockey League, and there's still two games left in this trip. We'll be back with a recap. The final scores, the Islanders 5, the Jets 2. Who says you can't have it all? Who says you can't have pinstripes and rock and roll? Michelob Light. Super premium taste in a less filling beer. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Have it all. This is today's Chevrolet S10 Blazer. For the fun, for the chores, for the town, for the great outdoors. It's all there for you. Weekends, work, or just plain cruising. Chevy S10 Blazer can do it all with versatility, style, and a touch of fun. No wonder it's America's favorite sport utility vehicle, Chevy S10 Blazer. Drive today, Chevy. Live today, Chevy. Live it. Chevy. Lloyd Lindsay Young has always loved the weather. Gee, this is neat. Especially when it was different. Snow in the mountains. Can we go to the mountains and see But snow? just watching the weather wasn't enough. Gee, this is great. Mom? Mom? Dad? Hello? Now Lloyd's a TV weatherman, and there's a lot of understanding behind every forecast, because Lloyd Lindsay Young has always been crazy about the weather. Weekdays at noon, weeknights at 8, only on Channel 9. You have a rebellion on your hands. The blood of your victims cries for justice. And justice will be done. Saturday at 3, the Mark of Zorro strikes a town run by cruel officials. I'll thank God for your life, Sergeant. Oh, my God! <laughs> Only the legendary Zorro can save the townspeople from corruption. Watch The Masked Rider Saturday at 3 on 9 in the afternoon, right here on Channel 9. The final score from Winnipeg is the New York Islanders 5, the Winnipeg Jets 2. Shots on goal in the third period. Look at this. Winnipeg with 21 shots for a game total of 49. The Islanders had only eight shots in the third period, giving them a total of 22 on the night. They led it 4-1 to one going to the third period. Babich on a power play goal at 8-17 got Winnipeg to within a pair. But then Brent Sutter at 17.04 after John Tonelli had stolen the puck in the Winnipeg end of the ice. Brent Sutter 17th of the year. And that's the way it ended, 
to two. The big story, I suppose, when you look at the stats in the newspaper or the hockey news or wherever summary you, you find, 49 shots on goal. Billy Smith, a very busy man tonight. No question about it, Jags. And I suppose when you think about it, he had to do some of the saves or had to make some of the saves necessary for the Islanders to win this hockey game because uh, early in the game, in the third period, I mean, in the second period and the first period, uh, he had some pretty testy shots. But I think the big difference as far as what Winnipeg Jets are concerned was back in the first period and uh, early in the second period when they couldn't put the puck in the net when they had the good opportunities they had billy smith making the initial save not being able to control the rebound and heavy traffic and they couldn't put it in he had good coverage smith did from some of his defensemen but there were times when winnipeg had par had the puck in good control and just had to put it in the net but they couldn't when you think of the winnipeg jets we mentioned from time to time that they have had a better record on the road than at home, and certainly this won't endear them to the crowd at the uh, the Winnipeg Arena tonight. We've heard the New York Rangers say things about the same way, Jigs, that they, they win on the road because they're a little more relaxed. They seem to play a little more freer there, so mentally they're charged up a little bit better on the road. They come home, they tighten up because in front of their own fans are afraid to make the mistakes that the fans will start to acknowledge with their jeers and boos. Well, a 5-2 to two loss in Calgary, a 5-2 to two win here in Winnipeg. Now the Islanders move on. They'll play in uh, Vancouver on Monday night and in Edmonton on Wednesday. But once again, your final score from Winnipeg is the New York Islanders 5, the Winnipeg Jets 2. New York Islanders hockey has been brought to you by Michelob Light. Super premium taste in a less filling beer. You can have it all. The Good Olds Guys, the Oldsmobile dealers of New York, New Jersey, and Southern Connecticut. By Mobile Super Unleaded Gasoline. Mobile Super Unleaded, it's really powerful. By the people of Eastern Airlines, they earn their wings every day. By your 53 participating Tri-State Toyota dealers who invite you to compare quality, value, and price. It's Toyota, not the other guys. By express mail delivery from the post office, we deliver excellence for less. By National Westminster Bank USA, an American bank with worldwide resources. And by Canon. Proud to be the world's leader in 35 millimeter photography and the official camera of the New York Islanders. Be sure to be with us Monday night when the Islanders meet the Vancouver Canucks at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time right here on Channel 9, your sports station. Tonight's game was produced by Bill Webb, associate director for tonight's game. Two of them, Tom Chaffrey and Chris Town. Commercial coordinator was Curtis Reed. Tonight's game was brought to you through the facilities coordination of Vanda Communications. This has been a presentation of WOR-TV Sports.